what we have here is a beautiful case of three uh, collectors. You know, one of the exciting things about our hobby is that it's not stuck. <laughs> again and again and again each year. Yeah. Good to see you here. Yeah, and you have some wonderful things to show us and some new finds and new productions. And so let's get started. Should we start with this let's case here? That's fantastic. The grand out there. <laughs> you went right to it. Oh, yes. I yeah. uh, love that. This is from the same pocket as the Aztec Sun. Exactly, because it's a spray type. Yeah. yeah. I'll put it in it's light. beautiful. It's a little starburst. Yeah. So I assume that came out at that period. It's out right. of my collection. Yeah. Yeah. This one actually went to Europe and was in Europe oh, since, okay. when, when was this? The early 80s? 1984? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So about 30 years. Yeah. It, it, at least. Yeah. And there's beautiful little crystals of peridotite oh, there as yeah, well. Oh, yeah. Very good. Okay. Zero in right in there. It's, it's a bonus to the Lagrandites when they have the paraatomite associated with the, the Lagrandite. And see, that's the paraatomite there. So I remember growing up as a kid, yeah. uh, owning a Lagrandite was a holy grail. Oh. Any Lagrandite, oh, yeah. little thumbnail. Yeah, exactly. Let me pull that out yeah. for you. Hell of a nice small cabinet specimen with huge, huge galenas. See, this is the sitter where right? you can tell right away, you know, immediately. It's that locality. Yeah, it's the classic. A, yeah, it's classic, yeah. absolutely. I like this piece because not only is it complete all around, yeah. but you have the sphalerites, yeah, which exactly. you almost never see. Yeah. And so these were found in the 1800s. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. It's all complete, like you say. Mm -hmm. Siderites are mostly in the back here. Yeah, that's wonderful. The thing is, we see them turn up here in the U.S., Mm -hmm. But usually they're just representative. Exactly. There's been very few major yeah. ones that have come yeah. up. No, that's a major cabinet specimen. I love these every time I see anything even near this. Yeah, look at this. It's all complete. <laughs> Double it's, termination. Yeah. All of these are yeah. little oh, terminations. Yeah. Every, every one. You know, it's funny. So last year I told myself, I have too many darn aquas. I'm going to stop buying aquamarines. Yeah. Probably everyone has an aqua. I, oh, yeah. I saw this. Don't my ever heart let dropped. anything go. Yeah, all my heart dropped. Get, yeah. I, I just yeah. fell in love yeah. with you it. Got, yeah. You got to keep them because this is just so bizarre that these fabulous aquamarines have been coming out of the ground like that. And 50 years ago, forget it. You yeah. just hardly got any aquamarine with Matrix at all, let alone this from uh, Pakistan. You know the story about the Chinese in Pakistan, right? What? So two years ago, one of the main Pakistani mineral suppliers sold his share of the mining rights yeah. to the Chinese for a few million dollars cash oh, and ongoing purchases. See that? They didn't follow through. Oh, so for a couple of years, a lot of things went over the mountains to China. Much easier wow, for them yeah. than came here. You see that? That deal fell through, apparently. Oh, so there's a lot more Pakistani material coming onto the market this year. Interesting. This was mined early last year. Wow, yeah. fantastic. I see a beautiful ruby and it kind of looks like Bur Burmese material. It does. Yeah. Well, it's it's classic. Oh yeah, absolutely. How long have you been yeah. dealing with Burmese rubies? Fifty years. Oh yeah, I've been with uh, the whole hobby of fine minerals sixty years now. So you recognized it immediately as Burma for yeah. the the waxy luster and the color, that's right? right? That's right. That's right. So. I saw this piece 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was labeled Burma, had a label, it was sold to a collector. This, this illustrates the danger of losing labels. Yeah, so this piece right. turned up here at the show, actually, oh. last week. Oh. Uh, no label, assumed to be just Afghanistan oh. by someone who didn't recognize it. Yeah. I remembered the piece. Yeah. Okay, so okay. these are um, these are odulites that yeah. started coming out a few years ago from Peru. Oh, okay. The initial location yeah. was actually totally misguided. They, the people who sold them first to the market gave the wrong province oh, to okay. hide the fact they were stealing them from the rightful claim owner. Oh. So now the rightful claim owner has been digging them the last year and a half and selling them directly. Oh, okay. Hence the new location, which oh. disagrees with what was published a few oh, years ago. Okay, interesting. Green. Very Beautiful. Good. Rich apple green. I mean, who thought the Canadian material would be surpassed? Exactly. 
And oh, so this is actually so the Huberite mine, the same mine we've known oh, for 30, 40 okay. years. Yeah, right. Right? With all they those Huberites? Oh, wonderful. Same Huberites. mine. Same mine. All Did that you time. Believe that. There's nothing. Never seen anything right? like this. Yeah. This is one stringer vein. Oh. They're following it with hand tools. Okay. And and it's it's odulite with little tidbits of Huberite, but oh, almost not. Okay. Like down in the crevice of microscopic. Yeah, little the, Huberites. Oh, okay. I bought yeah. these in China okay. at the Changsha Show in May oh, okay. as Chinese pyrites. Oh. So the truth turns out to be they're collected about 100 meters over the border into Burma, oh. and they just walk them back. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. The, the mine that's entrance beautiful. is on the Burmese side. Maybe yeah. the mine extends into, exactly. into Yunnan province. Oh, that's so funny. They're but beautiful. Politically, they're yeah. Burmese. So, Dave, I want to say, you're too, too damn smart. <laughs> Most people look at these, and I can fool them and say, where do you think these are from? Yeah. And on an immediate glance, they'd say, Washington. <laughs> You're right, they're not. There's subtle differences, mm -hmm. but most people look at them and, and just assume they're Washington. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, in the past, China's produced plumbo gumite like these. Okay. You know, very attractive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, druzy, sparkly coatings. Okay. And this is the same ore body. It's the other side of the ore body that produced all the green pyromorphites. Oh, wow. Okay. So, what they did is they found another edge of it and they're working it. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is it's very highly oxidized and as, as they go down layers, it's changing dramatically every 10 or 15 wow. meters. So these came first. Okay, these little guys. After this. Yeah. And there's not much of a vertical difference in the mine into yeah. where they were found. Yeah. And they're of course being collected artisanally with hand tools. This it's is not an economic not. mine. Yeah. And That's beautiful. The Chinese didn't know what to do with this. In fact, they didn't value it very highly initially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they didn't know the species. They were trained. We've all trained them over the last few years yeah, to get sure. pyromorphite. Right. So some of the first pieces were thrown away. Oh, they were digging to try and find more pyromorphite. You see that? Okay. And it, and it took a while. Because of that, they, it took a while to trickle out onto the market. Yeah. But the first ones appeared at the... Um, just before the Shanghai show in oh, November. Okay. Okay. So starting in October, I made two trips to China okay. to pursue this mine. Yeah. And this was then the next level down. Yes. All of a sudden, they went from this size yeah. crystal. Stepped right up, look at this. To these monsters. Look at this fabulous big museum tent. Yeah. Look at that thing. It's easier yeah, to film it. take out. Look at this. And that's pyromorphite, the green underneath yeah. there. How about that? Yeah. That is so interesting. One thing that's catching my eyes is pyrite on calcite yeah. for a common mineral, but with wonderful iridescence covering these uh, scalahedrons of calcite. Yeah. That's beautiful. So this is another find. It's been slowly trickling out, mm -hmm. and they just seem to hit the best ones I've oh, ever seen. beautiful. Uh, around August. Yeah, they almost look like somebody treated this and made it like this. It's just so different yeah. with this heavy iridescence. No, oh, that's wonderful. So the trick is that most of them are damaged. Yeah. So again, I, when I say there might be a few hundred good specimens, yeah. that's from seeing several thousand pieces that came out, but you most of them that. are worthless. You see that? Or they're banged up. Yeah. This is the other new find from China. Interesting, oddball blue fluorites with quartz. Well, it is unusual. They've got They're heavily tiny truncated fluorite. Modifications. Yeah, look at this. Now these were thousands of specimens. Probably three okay. or four thousand specimens wow. came out at once. Yeah. And then done. So how do you grade this compared to all what you've seen? Like a superb or... Because I haven't seen the ones with this habit like yeah, this. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, the balance between the quartz and the fluoride is essential. That's very important. Oh, yes. Th this is, honestly, this would be on the, on the higher end of very the average. Good. Okay. But there are some better ones. There okay. are some like this. But it becomes a matter of personal aesthetics. Yes. Do they have too much blue coverage? Yes, that, that's true. And they're smaller. It some looks like all just individual. But, I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. Aesthetically, it's a gorgeous thing. So this fits the needs of some collectors, and the other ones would kind of lean more toward that. I yeah. like, honestly, this costs more money. Yeah. Because there's more fluoride. Yeah. I like the aesthetics of having the That's separation. Right. That's right. Personally. Yeah, exactly. Same here. 
but what's nice is that there's so many pieces that came out. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure they're around the show. There's lots and lots of them that are yeah. going to be very affordable yeah. for a lot of collectors. Yeah. But yeah. I'll tell you what, even in China, it's hard buying this stuff in China now. You, you see go, that? You go there, and they all have laptops and cell you phones. See and, yeah, they know the whole game. Yeah, yeah, these exactly. things sell within 48 hours of coming oh, out of the mine. You see that? These are already on the resale market in Guilin you or Changsha. That? Wow. Right? Yeah. So if I'm not in China yeah. at, at that moment, the week they're found, I have to send my Chinese manager. You see that? Literally on a train or plane within 48 hours, or they disperse again. Exactly. It happens fast. Interesting, yeah. And, and the Chinese, the buyers in China, are now paying, especially for the larger pieces, they're paying enough money that a lot of Make them stay in China while. now. Yeah. Uh, how many times you're going to China now? You're going there all the time, it sounds like. <laughs> you know, it helps to have an office there, and, yeah. and thank God a manager I trust. Yeah. Um, if he can't get on a train or plane immediately, or if I need to be there for a deal, I hop over. There. I spent eight weeks there two years ago, okay. five weeks a year ago. Wow. This year, hopefully three weeks, okay. four or five trips. Yeah. And I so might be there. So they're kind of taking ca days. care of things there for you. I have though. a good team there. That's yeah. good. Very yeah. good. You have some fine florists from the Ross Lilly collection, and that's all hers. This is unbelievable. I do have more here. Oh, my goodness. But I, but I want to correct something. You, you said it by accident. Yeah. You called it a florite collection. Yeah. Ross Lilly's collection is more than that. It's, it was originally course marketed for the expensive beautiful okay. fluorites yeah but it's it's an important suite it documents the locality and the history of southern illinois very much so and so he had strontianites and benstonites and calcites and, yeah. um his goal was to have something of every style very good out. okay so so yeah i'm presenting more of it yes. as we get it cleaned and processed exactly here's another hundred pieces Unbelievable. But but I Quite do a collection. Yeah, I just I just want to say, you know, to anyone who looks at it, it's this guy poured his heart and soul into this for Oh, absolutely. Years 30 plus and years. years. Yeah, exactly. But he never considered it a fluoride collection. It's an oh, Illinois collection. An Illinois collection. How interesting. Okay. And here's a few bathroom rocks. <laughs> We're going to bring out and show in good lighting this time. This is, speaks for itself. This is a yeah. fabulous thing. My god, it's unbelievable. Heavy. Yeah. It'll How many ounces is it approximately? It does it have an ounce weight on it? It's about 15, 17 inches long. Look at this. This is wonderful. And it does have a little bit of hidden crystallization, still alluvial. It's fabulous. These golds coming out of Australia, yeah. just unbelievable. This is really totally unique because of the shape. Yeah. So yeah, this, this is, is really not the normal gold field. This That's is not right. Bendigo. This is oh. Western Australia. Yeah. And so there were two pieces that came out in this weird elongated shape. This oh, is the larger. It's fabulous. Absolutely yeah. fabulous. I mean, it's just dramatic. Oh. You never see anything like this. No. No, that, that's a real conversation piece. This is one of the now classic green garnets from Madagascar. This is beautiful. The crystals are so large. I've seen yes. the material, but much smaller crystals. That's a wonderful specimen. And these are pure green. Most of them have a little brown in them. That is correct. These are real, yeah. real intense green. And so you know these are collected several meters to 10 or 15 meters below the water level. Oh, it's a very difficult be... place. That is fantastic. So this is from a small pocket that was found early last year. There okay. were just a few pieces. Okay. The, the location has not been as productive as it was in the past. I see. But boy, the size of the crystals. Now, have you seen in the past crystals this big? The biggest one I, I, I've seen myself personally. Not that I've seen much. Yeah. I've seen only a few of this size. Yeah. But okay. the main thing about this is the richness and the color. Oh, absolutely. The color is totally. And it, it, like you say, the other ones have a little tint of brown in them, but right. they're green. But they have a little, just a little hint. This is real intense green. I mean, you have to respect them all. They're all incredible oh, for what they absolutely. are. Oh, absolutely. But, yeah. but this one I thought was another level. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. What a pleasure. Oh, I pulled out another somewhat more esoteric gem crystal to show you. Oh, Benitoite. This no turned up. about Benitoites. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of the one I donated to the L.A. County Museum a little bit. The one big crystal on the Matrix. Yeah. If you ever get to L.A., it's on exhibit there with the seahorse. No, excuse me, not the seahorse. The golden bear 
uh, that's a famous nugget that yeah. came out of California. They're, they're sitting next to each other. Yeah. Now at the time you donated it, you probably thought there'd be more Benito White coming down for decades. Um, no, not now it's it was just uh, they, they wanted to buy it. Uh -huh. And they gave me a deposit on it of 900 and I handed it back. I said, no, I'm gifting this. Wow. Uh, yeah, I gave it. It's one, one of the nice gifts I, I gave, gave away. Yeah, it's wonderful. And of course, this deposit is basically gone. Oh yeah, you don't you don't hear it. It's all pieces coming out of collection once in a while, right. but they're not producing this stuff. It's pretty much exhausted, as far as I know. That crystal is nearly four centimeters. Oh yeah, that's a big crystal. That's a little. That's bigger than the one I had in the matrix. I would say that's twenty five percent bigger. So I thought uh, I thought we'd end our room tour with something a little different. Okay. This turned up at the gem show. Okay, clinofumite, and here I thought it was some common type of thing just from a distance. Uh -huh. You can't tell what it, it is like from garnet. a distance. Yeah, like a garnet. Specialty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you have a cut stone, and I assume that's rough. Well, here's what happened. This yeah. turned up at the show, okay. at one of the jewelry shows. Okay. They found one pocket. This is from Tajikistan. Okay. And they cut it all, and saved just one Ooh, nice crystal to go with it as an example. Good. Wow. Dave, it's a tragedy. This yeah, is what happens, that's what happens around the world. That's right. 100% right. Boy, they look at it and say, oh, yeah, we can get a nice stone. Yeah, cut that up immediately. It's quick money, right? Yeah. yeah. So a, this is what happens. We have to get the word out. We have to spread right. these videos. We have to spread news about crystals. For most people, it's, it's a much better economics to just cut the stuff. That's right. So that's the only oh, surviving crystal. That's fabulous. This is a fabulous set here you got. Yeah. Okay. That's all I got. Well, once again, you do it do it again each year. You always have wonderful surprises for us and <clears throat> very elated to come and interview you, Rob. Thanks, really Eric. appreciate it. It's Keep an up honor. the good work. I still remember you terrifying me when I first met you and was oh, yeah. intimidated. Yeah. <laughs> this guy comes in and criticizes my most expensive mineral in yeah. 1992. Yeah. It was a $700, $800 rock and I about yeah. broke into tears. Yeah. And, and do you know what it was? <laughs> that you were trying to sell me English Torbanites, which were very good. Uh -huh. Nothing wrong with them. They were a very fine specimen. But unfortunate, you were kind of thinking, boy, I've got the best one of these. You can probably get on nice. one. Oh, yeah, you really liked it. But to me, it was they're nice. They were very nice. Uh -huh. And that's it. And it was so, and I knew that poor guy, he doesn't realize, because I think you were under the impression that these things were a lot more. Uh, uh, unique, yes. and I, I want, I, I'm very straight. When I talk to anybody, I tell them what I really feel it is. I don't embellish or exaggerate or whatever. I tell you what I feel about a mineral. I'm not always right, but personally, anything I make a comment in a mineral, that's a personal thing with me. I got the uh, message. He also told me to start going to museums and looking around. Oh yeah, that's right. So I did. Yeah, good for you. We've come a long way. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Uh, nice How you doing? I know you're Good. And I understand you have something nice to show us. I do, actually. And I want to ask you a few questions. I have this uh, Japan Ooh, Twin. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah, that's a, that's a twin quartz crystal on that. It's from, not Peru, but Arkansas. Very good. Yeah. Better yet. That's great. Yeah, to get these from Arkansas, twins, they're very difficult. Yeah, they're, they're very scarce, very scarce. Well, good for you. How long have you been collecting? Uh, since my dad really got me into it when I was like, i say six years old, very maybe good. eight years old. Okay. Yeah. And uh, is general minerals your favorite, or do you have any other minerals you appreciate? Uh, no, like you said, just general minerals. I mostly like fluorescence, okay. that type of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, we'd like to see the younger kids get yeah, into the hobby and grow up with the hobby, because you are our future if you stay with the hobby. Okay? okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. you got a good piece. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Hey, hi. hi. Welcome back. Thank mm -hmm. you. And here we're in the second phase with your wonderful things that you've picked up at the show or we didn't get a chance to film 
uh, the other day, and I see some wonderful things you have on display because you said you had something very special to show us uh, at the Westward Look, and here we are today now finishing this off on the second phase of your wonderful exhibit, okay? Yeah, yeah. But uh, these are known as a nickname, this, uh, the silver, is a ram's horn type uh, roping uh, uh, silver and uh, highly desirable when they mm -hmm. have these twisted. And you have the thick wire. This, this is actually a, a solid rock nature. you can like really hold it in your hand oh, yeah, and it doesn't right. wobble or anything that's like right. the gold. That's right, yeah. No, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Is this the best one I've seen so far? And I mean, that is a mm -hmm. hell of a thing. And, and you see there's still some limonite and stuff. So I, I never really cleaned it because That's I like the, the patinon. Yeah. 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 You the could, you patina. could make it more bright, but the patina is yeah. good as it is like this yeah. one, you know. That's it has right. this old patina. Oh yeah, you want to leave yeah. that. Oh yeah, 100% right. Now, the, 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 what a pair that makes. Yeah, I like that. Even though we filmed your wonderful emerald uh, last year, <laughs> Can you bring that mm -hmm. out? And I'd like to give a few comments on that. As a mineral specimen of emerald, it's by far the finest I've ever seen. It isn't because, oh, emerald, and it's as big. It's so aesthetic, number one. Number two, it's on calcite rhombohedron crystals. Number three, the color of this is just perfect for a specimen because you have have inclusions in as you can mm -hmm. obviously see but it's perfect for a specimen because the light enters it and it glows and you don't want it the top emerald color mm -hmm. and have it all clear it'd be too dark so here you will never see an emerald of this quality the thickness the perfection Flat basil. A lot of people say, oh, did they polish it? Yeah, because no, they, it's so bright. It almost exactly. looks like it, it was, yeah. but you can see some extra That's faces right. here. Yeah, you, know? you, see, you, yeah. you see the surface mm -hmm. there, and uh, a million percent, you know, it's a natural yeah. surface. And these, these are things you have to look for, the collector, and uh, you check it around the edges and everything. Uh, th this thing is an amazing thing. And what collectors need to know how important this is if it was dark and it was all jimmy, mm -hmm. it'd be pretty, don't get me wrong. But that's one yeah. reason that jumps yeah. out. Then it's perfectly hexagonal, and, and it's just a great yeah. piece. As you said, the color, color, you know, it's, it's mimetite from yeah. China. Yeah. And I remember many people uh, oh, were, were, were waiting when it came out, oh, they get better and better, oh, and yeah. then... It was just a one-time thing, one and now everybody's thing. crying. They're you know, crying. To get they one. didn't get them. And yeah. the thing of it is, the, the majority. I, I've seen a couple thumbnails, but mm -hmm. this the, this is a small cabinet, what you call a hand-sized small cabinet mm -hmm. specimen. But the huge crystals on it, and it's perfect. This is the best one of these I've seen. Yeah, yeah I, I just got that, okay. and. I don't have any further information yet. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they want to keep the locality oh, secret, yeah, um, but it's down. India, yeah. for sure. Okay. And the first one from there I've, I've, I've never ever seen. seen. That. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what we have, two Gwendols. This is from India, and this is from Switzerland. And yeah. here, both of them are pretty much white. This might have a hint, hint of a smoke, but it's really literally uh, white issue, mm -hmm. what I call colorless. And the habits of them, especially the Indian one, is really quite unusual, but you can obviously see once you start moving it around, uh, the Gwendol effect here, the bend. And this is truly a magnificent thing. A number of these beautiful light blue detailed, beautiful crystal faces of Aquamarine have been coming out with the matrix, but a few have shown up of this huge size and still perfect. That is very rare. Marcus. Dave, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, see you next year. See you next year. Hi, Dave. How are How you? <laughs> You're looking fantastic. I'm getting much better now. Man, years ago when the Russian tourmalines came out, there was a real strong brown overtone exactly. to the color. Exactly. And, and uh, what, what we're seeing now, you can see in yes. this beautiful crystal with the, uh, with the quartz on the side, yeah. this really nice, even pink to red color. Exactly. It's just, just fantastic. Yeah, the color has definitely improved. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you get these jemmy ones, yeah, Dave, like that? this guy here, and it, it's just total gem. You can yeah. cut stone out of there. Yeah, and really yeah, an right, intense right. Uh, color.
Beautiful. A lot of them on Matrix. Yeah, look we're at getting that. Elbite Matrix, uh, little quartz crystals Isn't in neat? association. Yeah. A big quartz look crystal here with the with the uh, Elbite rubellite tourmaline. Yeah. And I love yeah, this one. That. You're Isn't you're looking down the C axis of these that. crystals right. and with the intense right. magenta red of oh, those tourmalines. Wonderful. These are just fabulous. We we've, yeah. we've uh, gotten a number of these recently, and we're so thrilled to have them oh, because they're great. truly world class. Oh, absolutely. Yep. There's three different things that were in this new shipment. Yeah. These uh, stepped octahedral yeah. crystals yeah. of fluorite. Yeah. Uh, these are from a new find in Fujian province. Fabulous. Truncation, and, they yeah. call that. Yeah, that's and they fabulous. look very similar to ones that came out a few years back from Zhangji province, yeah. uh, from the Shifang mine. And what I've been told is that these two provinces butt up against each other. So it, it's possible that these are from uh, a mine that's fairly close to the other, okay. I, but they certainly the resemble fabulous. the earlier that are found. I yeah. love the intensity oh, of the beautiful. color and the shape. Absolutely. You know, the other thing that's cool in here is that most of the time when you see reniform masses of fluorite or the little botryoids of fluorite, they're usually a smooth surface. A few years yes, ago, there was correct. there were some out of uh, China that were just purple oh, and kind yeah. of botryoids oh, and yeah. round. And spheres, but, in fact. Yeah, yeah sphere. like actually but, big spheres. But they had no crystal development. That is correct. That these has crystal surface. These emerald green ones yeah. that are coming Beautiful. out, I've got a few of these in the case. Yeah. And this, this it's a really nicely crystallized Absolutely. surface. So you have the the reniform, instead of the beautiful cubes or octahedrons, yeah, yeah. you have this beautiful reniform mass yeah. with little botryoids. Yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, they actually have some crystal development. They're very translucent. Yes. And they have a beautiful emerald green color. Yeah. On this stuff, this last Chinese batch, it was like 50 or 60%. Wow. I wanted to keep all of it. Oh, I was yeah. like, I love this stuff. Yeah, it's so, fabulous. So uh, this one is really cool because oh, yeah, every color stick. temperature yeah. you, you put of light that you put mm -hmm. this fluoride into, it changes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in, in this case, under LED light, it's a very deep indigo blue. You put this outside and you get a whole new world. It goes to a oh, blue-green. Look at that color. Yeah, you can see it's almost oh. like a plumbo gummite blue, yeah. especially the smaller crystals, very translucent and uh, quite a vibrant blue color. Yeah. I, I, I haven't seen that blue too much in, oh, in yes. the world of fluorite. Yeah. You know, fluorite has so many Extremely incredible colors. Color. Yeah. yeah. And you know yeah. the other thing, it's it almost matches your tattoo. <laughs> I think that would go really well, Dave. <laughs> <Yeah, there you laughs> <go. laughs> this thing here is about 12, 14 years old now, that tattoo. That's a lovely tattoo. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I, I think you need to be the hand model yeah, for this fluoride <laughs> from this point forward. And if these are the most gemmy dioptes They're we've fabulous. found yet yeah. out of out of, uh, out of the uh Cockerville. Oh yeah, see you that's can a see pleasure the, to see that. The really oh, gemmy yeah. tips. See the, of this location, they were more opaqueish compared right. to some of the best sumit. But the, here, these have gemminess. Another thing I like about them, instead of the white. Uh, which is highly yeah. desirable. Don't yes. misunderstand yes. me. But here you have a uh, was it an kind of a blue green. Yeah, yeah, it's an alteration beautiful. as yeah. they were growing. Yeah. Uh, but I just love the really strong wonderful. emerald green oh, in this. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, wonderful crystal size all the way yes. from small cabinets. Yes. Uh, up to uh, the and you can see uh, around yes. here the it's overwhelmed by the case lights and some. But you got small cabinets, you got miniatures, yeah. you got uh, That's toenails. That's a wonderful locality. Yeah. They had. What is that? About three or four years they uh, start getting these out. That's true. Yeah. The other thing that came in was brand new yeah, amethyst. This this is out of you know we've seen over the last few years a number That's of right. amethyst quartz from the Gabobosab mountains. Yes. Now those are all in uh, small discrete vugs within basalt. Okay. So they they there's gas vesicles yeah. the the quartz has come in and crystallized yeah. and they'll have uh, a few amethyst crystals within the vugs in the in the uh, basalt. Yeah. Now to contrast 
broadcast that in the Brandberg complex in the Arango region. They're actually on felspar crystals, yes. and they're these uh, beautiful, beautiful, some yeah. sceptered, some yeah. some hoppered development yeah. of the quartz. Yeah, I can and, see that. Yeah. Yep, and and a nice uh, amethyst and and smoky quartz in combination, and we've got several of those. This beautiful oh, piece yeah. came from there, and I was I was noticing this little jewel, this this one. Uh, when you get that backlit, it's it's really amethyst uh, sure color. It is. It's, it's almost beautiful. like a, oh, yeah. this one in You're there is almost amethyst. like yeah, beautiful. Yeah. In Pakistan, however, in the Hunza Valley in particular, mm -hmm. we've been able to get a couple very large lots. Yeah, that's right. And, and we just got a beautiful uh, lot of aquamarine mm -hmm. with muscovite, the beautiful Absolute. rosettes, yep. and, and in between these lovely uh, aquamarine crystals. Fabulous. And this fluorite yeah, here is that. really a classic. That's a wonderful piece. That is, it's gemmy, gemmy. it's yeah. lustrous, yeah. and uh, yeah, you can see up. how how lovely the the yeah. character is, Dave. Oh yeah, this is a it's beautiful just, thing. It's in super oh, condition. Absolutely, all yeah. truncated and oh, that's fabulous. And we can actually Gemmy clean is. this one up a little bit more. The yeah. muscovite, you can see it still has yes, a little yeah. iron yeah. oxide. Yeah. Uh, Rob said, well, you have two choices. You can either take it to the show with a little bit of iron still in mm -hmm. it, or I can keep it till uh, I come down at the main show. I yeah. said, I'd rather have the rock. <laughs> so so uh, we oh, elected to wonderful. leave a little bit of the iron on it right now, and we can take it's it wonderful. off later. It's if somebody. Wonderful. This is from Badakhshan, okay. and we've been told that it's one of the best that ever came out yeah, of Badakhshan. Double terminated. You know, most of the ones that, that we saw coming out yeah. looked like this with yes. a very light pink yes. and a little bit of color zonation. Yeah. This happens to be blue at the at the termination here. Yes. But this one got, got a uh, kind of a brownish red yeah, uh, at the termination yeah, exactly. and it was inner it looks like yeah, it was competing with the albite and the quartz just a lovely then single you have, crystal. Have, you have a secondary druzy yes. quartz over the albite yep. then you got this nice crystal here of quartz yeah oh this is a lovely thing yeah and then remember this isn't sawed off at the bottom right. it's double terminated it's double terminated yeah just show that right yeah. here yeah. Yeah, that's a perfect termination. There's no yeah. damage to this either. Yeah. It's a killer. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah, piece. Double terminate. Yeah. Oh, it's an important specimen. Yeah. So, Steve, do you have anything else to show us? Ooh, look have, at that face. I have a few <laughs> special pieces to show you in the back, David. <laughs> so look at this was, thing. I'll let you hold Holy it. Holy cow. That, this is a killer. Is that not beautiful? And, yeah. They have to say it's the best one I personally have seen so far. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. And this came out of the very same pocket as oh, the others. Yeah, it, you can tell. Very typical of this yes. particular pocket with that light green contrast with the Jemmy uh, Diaptase yeah. crystals. And in super condition. Oh, wonderful, it's perfect. Yeah. We have one I hadn't seen anything quite like before. Oh, look at that. That is a double terminated Diaptase on a single <clears throat> smoky quartz. I've never seen yep. that before. Never yep. seen that. It's a, totally new to me. Yep. Now, I don't know. You, know, you don't sure. see everything that comes out, but this is the first time I've ever seen a thing like this. You, if you get quartz with them, usually a little side yeah. quartz, but that that for a miniature. Isn't that a special killer, piece? Killer, killer miniature. Oh, and I love God. even on the backside, the tourmalines. It's all and complete. The quartz is complete. Yeah. And, it's all and, intact. Yeah. Every bit of it. Yeah. A little etching, but it's yeah, natural. A it's on not the broken. Right. No, this is a killer. And we looked at some of the Russian tourmalines before, but we didn't look at one Ooh, like this, David. Look at this that. is this is the oh. finest uh, uh, oh, that's of these that we've ever had, yeah. and I, I love this piece. The yeah, color is so good. Killer. And the, look uh, at that. And the quartz in association, and the albite, just a. It's beauty. perfect, absolutely perfect. This is a gorgeous thing. Yeah, do you know this? This is killer by itself. Yeah. But here to add the the wonderful matrix like that, and look at that smoky quartz, and it's cloudy at the top. Yeah, yeah, that is the character of the specimen is fabulous. Yeah. I, love, I this. love the termination and the wonderful and the, modified termination yeah. color ah. as well. Pyramidal termination. That's wonderful. Yeah.
Oh, I David, think thanks for coming in our back room. room today. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's great to see you. Yeah. Nice seeing you yeah, again. Every year I look forward to it. Yeah. Well, you have so, some beautiful things to show us. Yeah, so absolutely. let's just start here at the. Who would you like to see right first? Here. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's so important, especially now. With Azurite being such a hot topic with exactly. Milpilas. That's right. And I don't know how many of the Azurites that you've seen from uh, Laos, which look just like the Milpilas ones. This one is not Milpilas or Laos, it's Chinese. Wow. And it's an old piece. Oh. Probably came God. out about 10 years ago. Always okay. considered the best Chinese Azurite that is ever found. Never seen anything like and this. And I like when people walk in the room, they immediately just assume it's Milpilas. Exactly. But it does not, when you look at it, and you've seen a lot of Milpilas, yep. you realize it's not. It it's is. It's got yeah. uh, you're, you're, a little bit different I'm, crystal structure. It's a real more blocky, yeah. uh, 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 sharp faces. And the malachite, and electric too. Blue. And in the malachite, malachite is, is almost a little different. Slightly That's different. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. What's so interesting yeah. is, of course, when we started, there was Sumeb, and then, of course, Morocco. And now there are these so many great Azurite localities that never existed. It's, that it's, is 100% yeah, correct. It's fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's an amazing I mean, thing. Again, remember back when well, Powellite was... You just was get a crystal. A, and a, yeah, yeah, just a broken that's crystal it. was yeah. a big deal. Oh, yeah. And this, this is amazing with that's a Powellite and still Wonderful specimen. Isn't that something? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you have these truncated fluorite crystals here. What really makes this interesting to me, that is like pure white in the center yeah, with yeah. a rose color on the periphery, then a little rose of uh, Muscovite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the combination of that and the fact the white, that really grabbed me yeah, because usually you just have the one color. Yeah, it has a middle. little yeah. touch of green in yeah, there too yeah, as well. Yeah. No, that's a lovely specimen. Now this is really magnificent because of the broader crystals that I've seen in uh, other rooms. So you have your big broader crystals and you have the big quartz crystals. You never saw these in this type of size and now I've seen even a little bit larger mm -hmm. ones. So mm -hmm. this is worth mentioning twice in the show right. because this is really a rarity Absolutely. to get a, a magnificent museum type specimen. But right there, look at that. You've got oh, two yeah. types of windows on okay. one piece, a closed and an open window. Boy, that sure is. Very get that unusual. light in there. There. There, if you can get them. And there's the regular. Yes. I mean, there was some talk oh, of, well, we should trim this down to here. No, 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 you can't no, no, lose no, that no, other window. No, 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 no. Yeah. No way. <laughs> These came out, as you know, a few yeah, years ago. But yeah. look at the Oh, yeah, look at that. Crazy aesthetics yeah. on that. Just piece. sitting on that gypsum. Now, that's a beautiful one. Hey, Dave, well, well, Stuart, I guess that'll do appreciate it. it. Yeah, I really well, there's appreciate one other thing that. I'd like to show you if you have a moment. Oh, sure. Uh, my son found a very interesting mineral here at the show, and he's okay. the next generation of mineral dealers. That's right. And I'd love to have him explain what he found. Oh, sure. This is my son, Troy. Dave? Hi, Troy. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Glad to meet you. So I found this botryoidal rhodochrosite from the Schwanning mine in South Africa. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, line, that is a gorgeous thing. Yeah, I like that. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you uh, got this at the show here. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been collecting now? Uh, just uh, about two, two years, three years. Two years. years. I'm so, trying to yeah. teach Troy about the aesthetics of the mineral, how the edges of something like this, you want it not broken. That's it's right. Kind of perfect edges. That's right. And there's no damages, yep. and it's got that beautiful sugary sparkle That's to right. it. That's right. No, uh, and it's he, a he choice. Very quickly. I mean, he found this piece and immediately realized that? it was a good one. Yeah, good yeah. for you. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, keep up the good work. How many minerals do you have in your collection? Would you say? Uh, just about ten now. Okay, good. And you started when? Two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, two years ago. There. So you great. keep up the good work. Appreciate you guys yeah. having me here. Thanks a lot. And Dave, one last thing I'd like yeah. to go over with All you. Right. We're doing something new that I think your viewers would appreciate seeing. Yeah. We've opened up a gallery in Beacon, New York, oh, and okay. it's we're calling it a multi-dealer experience. Okay. So what you have is a gallery. Which we have a beautiful gallery, all filled with showcases. Okay. There are four dealers featured. It's me, Irv Brown, uh, Green Mountain Minerals, and the Sunnywood Collection. Very good. The gallery. Uh, shows all of our minerals. Our inventory is all on display, so you can come as a collector and see four different dealers and everything Whoa. they have at the moment. Okay. And as a bonus, we are also doing custom bases with the Sunnywood Collection. And this way, collectors have a place to go 
outside of the shows exactly. when there are no shows on and exactly. actually see the minerals of, you know, some of the top dealers in the country. Wonderful yeah. idea. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'll get back. Dave, thanks for all your time. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> It's good to see you. I see you. Once again. a year is not enough. You know that, Dave? Isn't that the truth? Well, you guys both hey, live in California. Mm -hmm. Hey, Isn't it amazing? Yeah. We're one state apart from each other. We see each other once on Tuesday. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, yeah. We should make it more. Yeah. So, at any rate, I'll start with a, what I consider to be a really shocking specimen. Wow. Oh, now I got to have that glasses. rose. Look at this thing, the size of a big rose azure. You ever seen anything nicer than that? It's Bisbee. It's Bisbee. It's Bisbee. Yeah, yeah. It's a killer. It's the best one yeah. I've seen. Me too. I have never look seen a better one. Look at the other side. One. It's got the electric blue on the opposite side. Oh, look at that. Yeah, what a good example of showing the, the regular dark and yeah, then the yeah, electric yeah. blue. Boy, yeah. that is electric blue. What a color. You know, what interests me is the electric blue on this. Yes doesn't have the malachite pseudomorph behind it. Yes. That's a good point. Yes. So what's causing yeah. that electric blow? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what you've got probably is a second generation uh, outer coating exactly. of the of the lighter blue azurite on the darker azurite. Yeah. So you've got a second generation yeah. that brings in that color. Yeah. Wow. I like it too. It has like an, an interesting viewing angle like this. Yeah. It, of course it can be like that. Yeah. And then it can be, you know, just like that. Yeah. No. Well, you can take a wad of clay and just go. Yep. <laughs> a wad. There you go. <laughs> no, that's yeah, gorgeous. I'll that's pick this up tonight. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Take no problem. No yeah. problem. Absolutely the finest uh, right rose from Bisbee I've ever seen. seen. Same here. I don't remember seeing anything like that from yeah. Rancy that good either. Yeah. yeah. You've I would, been at this so long. I mean, yeah. you know. You've yeah. seen all yeah. the Bisbee stuff, Bob. Wonderful. Yeah. I love oddities and weird things. This is mm -hmm. one of those calcosites oh, wow. from China. That's wonderful. The contrasting of this and this, yeah. and then the whole setup. No, oh, that's a wonderful piece. And you know how crazy I am. Of course, it's yeah. the windswept yeah. tree on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, oh, yeah. you know, in Torrey Pines or that's up in right. Pebble Beach or something like oh, that. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, the contrast between. In fact, there's actually the a rock with a. a very much this type of a shape of a Unfortunately, pine. it is a rock. I would yeah. love it to be calcite, of course, but it is a rock, but that's okay. <laughs> that's why it looks like a cliff. It's you know, gorgeous. So. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Irv usually doesn't like single crystals that much, but he fell in love with this one. Ooh. Imperial topaz. Yeah. That been treated at all, do you know? No? No. Okay. That's wicked. It, it looks good. And, and you know, they usually have issues with the pitting and problems mm -hmm, on mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. that one's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Very difficult to get these with any gem in them because they, these yeah. guys, as if they see it clear, yeah, right up in there. Wonderful. Exactly. They, they cut them right off. I know. So it's very good that this was salvaged. I don't think that those topazes are respected in the marketplace. I think they're, they're gorgeous, not. especially when they have that yeah. bit of pink in them, and I yeah. think the per carat prices are much too low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when, yeah. Years ago, when this stuff was around, you could buy a little crystal for a buck. I know. Mm -hmm. Even then, they had no respect. They're gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. absolutely gorgeous. I and think it's a the birthstone for November. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a good one. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh. Look, this look is, at this you guy. know, it's just a pretty, yeah. pretty yeah. oddity. It's Colors from the Congo. Yeah. yeah. It's crystal after azurite. Right. Wow. Doesn't that look like a Jap Law Twin a little bit? Yeah. Japanese yeah, Law Twin. Yeah, it's it? not, yeah. but no. it just has that look to it. Yeah. But it's yeah. just it really it's interesting does. and it's beautiful. Yeah. No, it's just beautiful. And this falls in the category of beautiful mineral, inexpensively priced that anybody can get. Yeah. You know, no. these are not expensive. What's the host mineral under this? I don't oh uh Azurite? Azurite. Now there there are people that are saying that it's as starts as Azurite. Yeah. Goes to malachite, then replacement mm. of the crystal cola. Yeah, well, you can break the crystal off and find no. out. <laughs> we could, but there are some. But yeah. does, now, Dave, yeah. you feel how light that is. That's yes. why I'm a little dubious about all these replacements because it's really, really light. I almost feel that like it's correct. a cast. Mm. It, to me, it's skeletal yes. inside. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Those are not as sharp as the uh, similar things from Raymine. Oh, my God, those are the best in the world. Selenite. Yeah. You know, those they were, are the best They were originally put out as azurite, but they were really selenite. Yeah. 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 I had initially thought this was still in it as yeah. well because it's of not. the weight, but it's, it's not. not. No. Crystal morphology is different. Good morning, Ev. Oh, hi. Good to Dad, see you. How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Here we good. are. Yeah. Another year. Yeah. My gosh. You've got some other great minerals, too. Thanks. Yeah. 
You know, the Red Cloud Mine is world famous. There's been some great finds there, and you've got one here that's really pretty darn intriguing. I'd like you to pull that out. Sure. Uh, this was collected in uh, April of 1996 okay. when uh, Wayne Thompson and his partners were mining at the Red Cloud, and mm -hmm. they hit a huge pocket that produced uh, many fine pieces. Yeah. Uh, many of the, the great Red Clouds that are in people's collections no. now yeah, yeah. are from this find, yeah. and this is an exceptional yeah. example. Well, yeah. the, the fact that the matrix pieces came out on this dig made it very important because the earlier, like the Ed Over things, were all single crystals, mm -hmm. no, no matrix. This is just very, very cute, very nice. Very fine azurite roses on matrix from Milpias are, are the rare, at the rare end of the spectrum from down there. And that is so beautiful. It's undamaged. No, I don't see any damage on it at all. And, uh, and the contrast between the blue and the uh, gray matrix, really, really fine. Perfectly mm -hmm. positioned. Yeah, this is an exceptional example. Yeah. Uh, to my knowledge, this is the finest azurite rose on matrix from from, from Milpius. Milpius. When did that come out? Uh, this was mined in 2009. Okay, so it's been around for a few yeah. years. It's wonderful. There's another rose in here that's not on Matrix that I, in its own way, I like even better. <laughs> I love the Matrix piece, but this one has the mm -hmm. color that Milpias has become very famous for. Yeah. The electric blue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is, uh, although I guess not technically a rose, it's a rose-like crystal. Yeah. Very yeah. large, um, exceptional color. Uh, this one was collected in about January of 2012. Oh, really? Recent stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, a couple years ago. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Last year, we sort of ended our conversation saying that we were going to go underground at the Raleigh mine, right. which we did. I went back later on a second trip. Okay. And uh, uh, you know the, the miners had been following a vein. And this specimen I saw in place. In place. Okay. Underground. And then they dug um, it out and they collected it. Uh, it's been prepped, cleaned, and here it is in our case. Yeah. Yeah. It was neat to see this uh, on the wall, yeah, underground, yeah, yeah. and and now to see it in its <laughs> prepped condition. That was that was part of a seam. In a yes, seam? it was a, a crack of vanadin or uh, uh, wolfenite crystals. Yeah. With a little mimetite too. Huh? Yep, a little bit of mimetite. These are very large crystals for the Raleigh mine. Yeah. The uh, color is so intense. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, where's that from? This is from Queensland, Australia. Uh, very exceptional leaf gold from yeah, Australia, yeah, yeah. which, as you probably know, Australia is not known for its leaf gold. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. This yeah. piece is interesting because it's in calcite. Really? So it could uh, be, it may have been etched some uh, to This piece was not uh, etched with, with no? acid, no. This oh, was we mechanically aren't. cleaned. Oh, okay. You won't okay. see any etching here, no chemicals, no, acid no etching, acids yeah. were used. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the nice things about Australian gold, and one of the reasons this is such an intense color, is because most Australian golds run in a very high percentage of gold, mm. very, very little silver. And California gold has a lot of silver, 10%, 12% silver in the golds over there. But this runs up in the 97, 98% gold with very, very, just a trace of other metals in it. That's, I see. That, yeah, that's what accounts for that wicked yeah. color. Thank you very much, Ev. Appreciate it. Always good to see you. Good to see you. God, wow, how many years fantastic. have we known each other? More than I hate to, <laughs> like to admit. <laughs> this is this is your great new setup here. Yes, at brand Western new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll start right here. Uh huh. Down, down, this down. is this is from the mine where the mi miners were sitting around in the shack. Uh huh. Christmas time. Uh huh. And a uh, belt was bringing ore out of yeah, the mine, and right. all of a sudden all the alarms went that's off. That's right. And my stopped. God, they found big yeah, big chunks. yeah, 20, 30 yeah. pound pieces. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember uh -huh. when you displayed those. Yeah, I handled. I handle the whole thing yeah they were short shifting and the uh, because it was they were in old workings there was a lot of iron and metal and stuff so uh -huh. the conveyor belt sensed oh, that there was something it, yeah. 
uh, you know, a steel coming up, so it shut the conveyor belt down because that usually gums up the crusher. Sure. And the guys went up the belt and saw this. They thought it was an old brass pump. <laughs> you know, the guy hooked it and knocked, dropped it yeah. off of there. It took about uh, only the third guy looked at it and say, "Hell, that's not brass. That's gold." <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a great that's story. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Romanian, Romanian. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They're rare yeah, and they're, they're very, very old. Yeah, they're high in silver content. That's right. right. So it's a little light. paler, yeah, a little paler. Yeah. That's a that's a nice one. Yeah. Very photogenic. Yeah, both of these. And this one mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're old specimens. Probably a hundred plus years old. Oh, I would think so. Yeah. Because you know, that mine operated. My like, God, I, oh. I can't even tell you yeah. when it first started. There's yeah. another Christmas pocket gold back there oh, too. Right there? There's two of them okay. here. Yeah. yeah. I buy them back from people that bought them years ago and uh, decide to mm -hmm. sell them and. Almost to a person, or to a person, they've made money off them. They yeah. bought them right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about a couple of these silvers. You, well, you, this is a silver here from Russia, which yeah, are, at yeah. one time they were on the market maybe 10, 12 years ago, and then yeah. they dried up. There weren't a lot of them that size. Most mm. of them are quite small. That's a particularly good one, though. Yeah, I saw some wolfenites that I wasn't sure where they were from, and there's a there's a Jonas Pocket tourmaline. Yes, here. yes, right. fantastic. Gosh, yeah, that's yeah, amazing. Let's take yeah, a look that at was. That. That belonged to one of the uh, uh, owners of the mine who decided to part with it. We bought mm. that uh, about six, eight months ago, but it's it's one of the larger that's still on matrix. A lot of the really long ones had no matrix, but this one yeah. has some quartz matrix and some feldspar. Yeah. So. And this is unusual, a smithsonite coating <coughs> barite. Barite? Uh, yeah, barite's mm. underneath. Where's that from? Uh, it's Kelly, Kelly Mine, New Mexico. Okay. Yeah, it's unusual mm. on, on the barite. And yeah. in this case are some of the new wolf and ice from China, the aren't they nice? Yeah. But yeah. they're nice on the white background, Color. you know, they really yeah. pop. So now what's, that, I can't even pronounce the locale. I, can't, I don't know how it's pronounced either. <laughs> yeah. we, haven't, we haven't owned them, we just bought them at less than a week ago. And, uh -huh. uh, I have to figure out the correct pronunciation of, of that uh, yeah. locality. Wicked, but, wicked orange color. Yeah, they are that. So yeah. There's a new way to display things, which is... Oh, yeah, listen, a this is a new comments. lighting. Yeah, yeah, new lighting, <clears throat> a new way to more vertically, but at least people can get nose to nose with yeah. the specimen. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, we always have some stuff underneath the, the table uh -huh. and the drawers, so there's All a few right. new things here. I, I've had a lot of manganites over the years, but never one that's that good. Oh, look good. at that. I mean, look at yeah. the luster. From Ilfeld, you know, Germany. Ilfeld, Germany, yeah. yeah and, it, and there's no broken crystals yeah. or no edges that are sticking out. It's just yeah. one wonderful uh, manganite, yeah. really Beautiful quite, quite a nice yeah. reaction. These are the, the fluorites from yeah. Peru, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. with the Is green center. Is that Wanzala? yes, yeah. yes, yeah. that's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. no, I, I, I've been told that these are light sensitive. I could be. I don't know. It's never been out. Of, it's always been in my yeah, collection in drawers. But you don't have to worry well about it. Well, this is another piece uh, that I'm. Uh, yeah, that. and that's sweet. That yeah, this nice. came out of the famous pocket when they were digging the Simplon Tunnel, oh. and they they preserved a, a group in there yeah. that you can and 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 made a display out of it. Yeah. Historically, one, that that's that goes very back. Old. Yeah. When was that done? In the twenties? Yeah, 20s? no, a little later than that. I think in the thirties, because okay. the man that I got this from was one of the contractors. Oh, okay. That and he lives right at the entrance to the Simplon Tunnel. Mm. Normally, malachite pseudomorphs are not very exciting. I that recognize that rock. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I can tell you. <laughs> Where you got that? That's right. That's Fred right. Burr. Yeah, that's right. And Fred uh -huh. got Long that down. from the Smithsonian. Is that right? He I traded. Found that I didn't know. Yeah, he yeah. traded some of the uh, copper coated wire oh. or uh, cuprite coated cuprite. wires out of oh, Ray, cuprite, uh, which he had traded with uh, grapefruit to the miners. Oh <laughs> my God! And, and he sent some to Smithsonian, oh, and, and he got up, that yeah. from. That's I, a Sumet piece. Yeah, it is Sumet. Yeah. I, it's a remarkable that piece. I have worshipped that piece. <laughs> well, you, God, for you 50 gotta, years. Well, but, I, uh, I called you Mr. Gold when we started. Yeah, we end up with gold, Mr. and you gold, really right. are. Okay. I really very appreciate good. it, Thank Wayne. you, Bob. Thanks, Thanks so much. much. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And Tom. Hi, Dave. How are you good doing? to see you again. Yeah, well, we'll come in you. my room here. Yeah. yeah. So can you pull that yeah, out sure. and this I'll explain it? Yeah, sure. This is a it. fantastic yeah. that was found in Estatobi, Sahatana Valley, Madagascar. Maybe about two years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic crystal. It's wonderful. Actually, it's a group of three crystals: That's right. one interlocking That's here, right. and two with a fantastic triangular That's termination, right. perfect faces, That's right. and superb quali yeah, quality. Super. Let me show you the color. The yeah. color range goes up from a brown to a green, and more red, like ruby red right. on top. This is superb. I, yeah. I love this piece. This yeah. is. 
caught my eye yeah, immediately. Yeah. In my opinion, is uh, the best calcocyte oh. ever uh, to come from uh, Banat, Banatka, okay. Romania. It's it's fabulous. You see, it's a okay. fabulous twinned crystal oh, yes. on a sparkling calcite matrix, and uh, the guy who collected, uh, who, who had this in his collection, was. Uh, Professor uh, Dr. Sigmund, he's a very, very famous collector of last century. Okay. He lived in Vienna. He got the piece in 1960, so this is really, really very old. Fantastic. And you can tell how much they loved them and in former days the collectors, how much they, they studied the pieces. They made a drawing of the very twinning good. on oh. calcocyte here on the back very of the label. Good. No collector would do this today it's anymore. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, a fabulous oh, a pink yeah. fluorite. Okay. This was found gorgeous. Uh, maybe about six or seven years ago okay. uh, in Mont Blanc, Chamonix, mm -hmm. uh, uh, France. Uh, actually, three stralas, <coughs> sorry, uh, three stralas uh, mined this pocket. Uh, they kept all the best pieces together, uh, sold only very few uh, to pay for their living. Right. And uh, last summer, they decided to, to do the split, to split oh, the pieces. Okay. And that's how I could acquire, I was lucky ah, enough to acquire okay. this fabulous piece directly from the private collection. Well, congratulations. It's a fabulous piece. It's as good as I have ever seen. Thanks. So yeah. Thank Goodbye. You. Thank you. Dan, how are you? I'm flabbergasted to see this exhibit because it's just so broad and it just hits you like a ton of bricks. You did a magnificent job of setting up these cases and so much color shapes. And do you know what's catching my eye when I look at that? You're giving an edu educational aspect to it with the crystal models and other related articles to mineralogy. I think that's highly important and educational. And a very, very distinct color from the forge. Just beautiful. Beautiful. Dating from the mid-1980s you know, mid and uh, uh, now increasingly rare. It's, uh, oh, it's one yeah, of the really just, hard to get European classics. That is true. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay. So, this okay. was actually bought by one of our clients in 1972 okay. at uh, an auction in London, at okay. Sotheby's auction in London. Okay. And uh, this had been in a collection in the UK Fantastic. since 1972. And we were lucky enough to buy, uh, to buy the Harris collection, which is one of the more important collections in Europe. Yes. And uh, he had real treasures like the Morganite, this uh, super, super um, Jonas, Jonas? Uh, yeah. Jonas Tormley, That's which is right. a really nice cranberry. Yeah. Beautiful color. Look at that. That's a hell of a thing. Yeah, for a fighting quartz, oh, it's, uh, it's a super, super special. Oh, absolutely. You've seen it's thousands of these in your oh, lifetime. Yeah, but look at the isolation and the lifting of it and uh, the overall size of it. Ah, beautiful what a beautiful atomite. Beautiful atomite. Atomite. It's gorgeous. Oh, wait, look, beautiful. Yeah, it really beautiful is. Piece. Like God, I haven't seen a sperialite for a while. That's no. so exceptional. I knew what it was, I just couldn't say it. Well, platinum minerals are very rare, you know. Oh, this very is platinum. Much so. Sperialite is platinum arsenide. That's not right. Arsenide, and it's uh, arsenide, yeah. just an incredible specimen. Yeah. And in Norilsk, it's one of the yeah. world's richest platinum group yes. element uh, mines. And yeah. uh, is this you know, calcopyrite that it's on? Yeah, calcopyrite. Yeah. Yeah. And the spherolites are all encased yes. within the sulfides. And uh, the sulfides are very carefully worked away to reveal the, the uh, crystallized spherolite underneath. Yeah, wonderful. This is a typical what they call a ram's horn type of silver, and I assume it's from Norway. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a lovely, yeah, lovely Kongsberg. Yeah. Okay, and uh, then you have uh, calcite with it, but uh, this beautiful aesthetic view of this thing, super choice, yeah. small hand size specimen. Yeah. Yeah. Dates from the late 1800s from uh, you know, from Russia. It's, from uh, we Russia? we see a lot okay. of specimens, a lot of Very aquamarine good. specimens in today's mineralogical world from Pakistan and uh, yes, exactly Afghanistan. But, uh, but this is a Russian one. This old is an old Russian, uh, old Russian one. Yeah, wow. this came from the Moss collection oh, okay. in England, Fox. which um, yeah. which was a very famous collection. Very much so. Yeah. As a company, we love specimens with provenance, exactly. and it's just so rare these days to yeah. uh, to find you know a beautiful, beautiful old label to go with the uh, to go with a really fine specimen. This Proustite is from uh, from uh, Charnassier in Chile, oh, and nice. it's uh, it's just super. Look, we have a Bryce Wright label, sold in London in the 1860s, oh. 1870s. Oh. 
And, a uh, real you can classic. just imagine what a treasure this must have been exactly. at that time. That is correct. You know, and, uh, yeah. It shows that China Steel was producing very fine specimens you think you know, back in the 19th century. Yeah. Look at this thing. Yeah. We just this bought this from a, a cubic. From a very important collection in yeah. Australia. And this is a um, nice large diamond. Yeah. Just beautiful. One of the oh. nicest big crystallized oh, diamond really But it's actually is. a group. It's not a. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a group. A, uh, oh, yeah, very single. much so. See this? Yeah, it's a group. Free interpenetrant crystals there. You got it. A lot of the serious collectors. This is beautiful. Just just a perfect, like a bush. Jemmy, scalahedrons, gorgeous thing. You know, this is a super etringite crystal with the, the best bright canary Colors, yellow. Colors, unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it, it almost blinds <laughs> Yeah, It's yeah. intense. And if it, what, you know, what I like uh, about yeah, display minerals, you together. put those together. Yeah, there, you know. there you go. Look at that there color. Look at that. That's what's so fun with That's minerals. That's the great you thing about minerals. Things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look at the color yeah, combination. Wonderful. Yeah. How do you beat that? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. This, this is the sort of thing that Sumeb is really well known for, the yes. very fine oxidized um, copper and, mineralogy. Yeah, and the thing, the contrasting color, the, the malachites stand out so well with these, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, it's a mixture of cerusite and calcite, a little okay. bit of chalcotrichite included oh, yeah. in the... Uh, okay. In the cerusite, which yeah. give it, you know, gives oh, okay. it a nice bit of contrast. I wonder it's so heavy. <laughs> the cerusite's <laughs> a heavy lead mineral. <laughs> this is probably one of the most three-dimensional specimens you could imagine. It's um, oh, it's superb, but it's not just superb from this yeah, side. Right. Yeah, it's turn a it over. Superb yeah. specimen from both sides. Yeah. It's a um, dolomite cast. Okay. After uh, probably after calcite with yes. a second generation of calcite. Right. Okay. Overgrown. But if you turn it 180 yeah. degrees Probably around, David, so you can that. see the back. You, you can make two specimens out of it. One day you have it this way, and the other day you have yeah. it. They'll say what happened. Yeah. That's beautiful. Look at that. All totally covered on both sides. That, that is. Very different. Oh, I love that. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of really fine broken hill specimens. Yes, you really do. And uh, I'm going to show you a few. Okay. This is, um, we're lucky just to catch this specimen. It's um, just one of the finest pyromorphites that Australia oh, ever that produced. Is wild. Very reminiscent oh. of the Bad Ems Germany. Pyromorphite. I wasn't, to be honest with you, I wasn't quite sure until I, now I see that it is pyromorphite. And uh, that's that's a hell of a thing. Never seen anything like this. Yeah. In this coloration like this. Yeah, and the crystals yeah. are over Dark an inch chocolate. long. Yeah, look at the, yeah. the length of the crystal and these burst, beautiful burst. Okay. And this is just a freak of nature. It's um it's a it's a whole pyromorphite oh, yeah. stalactite. I don't yeah, know if Brian can so. yeah. get down into there. But look at that, it's actually a stalactite of pyromorphite. Pyromorphite, would you believe that? Yeah. 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 This was one of my favorite specimens in the collection. Mm -hmm. Just a bow tie Smithsonite. Smithsonite. It is growing. Smithsonite. Yeah. Look what at this bow tie. Yeah. Look at that bow tie. Yeah. That is so cool. That's a very fine. Museum standard oh, specimen, very like much you were so. saying, Dave. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely, lovely. absolutely. The lead production stopped in the UK in the early 1900s, but yeah. then uh, as technology moved on, they discovered that fluorite was perfect for smelting. Yeah. So fluorite became a very useful ore. Um, instead of the lead, which became a useless byproduct, the mines then reopened for fluorite through the 40s, 50s, no, even back to the 20s. From the 20s to the mid 1970s, mm -hmm. England okay. produced some of the world's finest fluorite specimens. Oh. This is from the Heights Pastures Mine, and uh, very, very rare to get the uh, beautiful druzy yeah, sugary druzy quartz. quartz on there. Yeah, Look at the beautiful, little beautiful. cubes. Isn't that a beautiful old thing? This is a scorodite from the Real Gordon Mine. Oh, it's mine. a scorodite. Yeah. Okay, because I didn't know what it was. That's why I said there's something about that. We gotta find out what that is. Oh, that's good, so it's scorodite. This is a, uh, it's called a box epimorph. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. And this came out in the late 1800s uh, from the Virtuous Isn't Lady Mine something? in uh, Tavistock, Devon. Were these fluorites, you think, surrounding that, pseudomorphic? It's one of the real English classics. Yes. And, uh, the best one of these known is in the, the British Museum. Exactly. They're, they're siderite. Uh, please note the English uh, pronunciation. Siderite casts. Oh, I after, see. That. Um, okay. After fluorite. I got you. So it's the uh, alteration of that. Okay. Um, I'm going to hand over to uh, hand over to Diana because she has yeah. one special little thing that okay. uh, she's going to show you. We, okay. we need at least one holy cow to show. Okay. <laughs> hey, Dave. Hey, Diane. How you doing? <laughs> yes, very well. well. What do you have in your little hot hands there? Oh, you know, we always have some bathroom oh. treasures. So this one is a real classic, Ooh. something that you never get to see. Yeah. So there you Mimitite. go. Mimitite. Yeah, Allura Mimitide, wow. like one of those real, this real treasures. The wow, color is just killer. One of those really amazing specimens. And the thing of it is, there's such large crystals for yes. this location. Yeah. Such a rich, rich coverage of that specimen. Oh. So you hardly ever see those. When yeah. you, and, and it's just a perfect size. This is just the, you know, the luster is impeccable. And then Congratulations. Good Keep up the good work, you guys. You. you did a wonderful job. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Hey, good morning, Dylan. Good morning. How, How are you doing? Bob? Fantastic. I'm doing How fine. are you? Yeah, good, good to see you. you again. I was immediately drawn to this pyrite, and I and I made the mistake of not reading the label, and I said, oh, is that from Wanzala? No? And you immediately said... This is Italian. Italian? Italian. I mean, that, that just blows me away. It's incredible. It's one of the finest large pyrites I've ever seen. Hands down. Yeah. What do you know about the mine? I, I, I know that it produced very few specimens, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and I've only actually seen a handful. Okay, that's in How Tuscany. In Tuscany. Yeah. How many have you seen? None. I, I wasn't really? even aware of the mine, to be honest with you. Yep, yeah. that's very, very fine. Hmm. Now, we've been talking about pyrite. Yes. A common mineral. Yep. You have another common mineral yes. over here that we need to this take quartz, a peek at. This quartz, actually. Look at that. The iridescence? Yeah. It's a, it's a okay. quartz burr from Collier Creek. And it has Arkansas. This, Arkansas. Okay. Yep. It's got this rainbow effect. Yeah. It's really, truly beautiful. Those crystals kind of look iridescent. Almost like aqua ore, like it was treated with titanium. Yeah, I, I can this is natural. Yeah, I can see some rainbow-like colors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Over here. It's really... This was new from this year, found in the last three months. Really? Best the, from the pocket that we have found. You dug that? No, the, the miner. Okay, okay. You know, I was looking at this specimen, and I immediately identified the tanzanite, but this threw me off. I, I didn't recognize that right away. What, what's the... Those are blue prenite crystals. Blue prenite. That was one pocket, about a dozen pieces. This is the finest recovered. You know, I flew I'm... from Munich. I got the phone call uh -huh. about this find, and I flew from Munich to Tanzania. And the, the, the specimen was waiting there for me. Wow. You know, what, what, thr what throws me about this is that the ten uh, prenite tends to form at moderately low temperatures most of the time. And that kind of surprised me for the tanzanite deposit. So really very unusual. I, I don't think I've ever seen prenite with tanzanite from down there at all. I gotta yeah. see the Russian topaz. Right over here. Take me over there. Sure, see this is from the same the, mine the, as the Heliodors. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, you get that hint of sherry color under the blue. Excellent uh, mica books. They're you know, very sharp, very nice. And, but the contrast of colors, really wonderful. I can't even count how many crystals there are on that piece. Really fine. Uh, how much of this has come out? Do you have any idea? Not many. I've only seen three specimens in total. Yeah. This is the only one on mica. The other one was on uh, a beautiful feldspar. The uh, color blue is almost a, a, a sea blue in, with the contrast of the uh, sherry-colored material. Wonderful. This calcite from Rio Grande do Sul yeah, in Brazil? Yeah, yeah, that's quite a calcite. It almost yeah. looks like someone colored it with a highlighter. Yeah, yeah. This is what a phenomenal, think? phenomenal piece here. It's a fluorite from Namibia. Isn't that something? Looks like a crucifix, wonderful. Put a chain on that, put it around your neck, you'd be safe all your life. <laughs> yeah, isn't that really nice? It's truly wonderful. Yeah, 
Now where's associated with the quartz crystal as well. Oh look at that! I'll be darned. That is really something in the color on that. If I can, oh look at that, That's looking through that. Beautiful piece. Wonderful. All the little printites. You got two or three, four generations of stuff here. Really, really cute. You know, what makes this piece so special pieces. is that it has a quartz crystal. Yeah. Tanzanite yeah. and quartz are even more rare than prenite. Yeah, I, I don't think much quartz came out of there. That no. Was, I, the no. temperature on that was low enough, so that didn't happen. This is Clay Center, Ohio. It was in the mid-century, you know, the 50s, 60s, 70s, famous, absolutely famous for its wonderful uh, fluorites. And the, the color of the fluorite is due to organic inclusions. So when you put an ultraviolet light on that, that thing just glows a marvelous color. Not, it's not, not blue like most fluorites. It has sort of a you know, um, tannish yellow color, very, very bright. And of course the celestites, they glow a slightly different color, so you get a really good contrast. The, these are so fragile to get a piece that big that fine is really a challenge. It's a wonderful specimen. That's, that's really a very fine San Pedro Coralitas piece. A lot of them were smaller than this, so this is a very, very fine cabinet specimen. Excellent color, good luster, nothing to complain about on this, no damage at all. Really a very fine piece. This is from Columbia. Whoa, I didn't see anything like that down, that down there. That, the color on that is just wonderful. Look at that, sharp, perfect, Terminated crystal. I don't see any damage on it. No cleaves. Yeah, no. The size of that is really exceptional. That's marvelous. Do you have a mine name on it? This is uh, Boyaca. Okay. Okay. Really nice. There's the show poster. The color on this isn't true, unfortunately, but that's the baby that's here. Yeah. That's a really fine little piece. Where's that from? This is Venezuela. Is it really? Yes. Yep. Yeah. You know, I, I would not want to collect gold in Venezuela. It's too damn dangerous down there. It truly is. Yeah, I've got a friend who worked in a gold mine down there, and he said they were losing miners almost on a daily basis from snake bites. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, this has been exciting to see all of these things, Dylan. It always you, is. Yeah. Thank you, you so much. You Dave. have some great minerals. Another beautiful year. Thanks. Yes. Really yes. good. Yes, I look forward to next year. Of course. <laughs> Where else would we be? <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you again. What are you laughing at? Do you have some gorgeous things in here that oh. you're so used to having s s superb specimens? And I walked around a little bit. You really have some neat things to show. So let's start with this case, okay? Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, it's very good. unusual because, Dave, as you mentioned, yes. it's got the blue core yeah. and then these rubellite drips that yes. it's all terminated. Yeah. But it's the length of it and thinness of that crystal, and it's like two feet. Yeah, a little closer. over. It's actually unbelievable. Yeah, we and then a nice quartz for the base. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah, thing. It's a fabulous thing. Yeah. So these were found actually May of last year, and I am just now in the process of receiving the entire, the rest of the oh. pieces from the pocket. It's beautiful. The color is so rich. It's a real nice green. A lot of these are a yellow green. They right. have kind of a muddy look to them, but this, this is a beautiful shade of green. It's so, a real like a real peridot type of green. Also in the pocket, they got into these larger wow. crystals. Okay. And the color obviously isn't quite as gemmy, but we did have crystals, you know, Eight centimeters. Fantastic. Eight to ten centimeters. Right. This is really natural, and you don't play around with a thing like that because it, the silver is really right through the barite. Right. And that, that's a good guide right there. No, this is a superb thing. And the shaking, don't worry about the shaking. These are very thin. They're almost like hair, but they won't break. Uh, you don't want to go like that to it, but no, that's yeah. a superb, superb silver. Especially highlighted with the barites, like yeah, I love it. And this the is bearings. China. Yeah, this is Chinese. Beautiful. Sure, sure. The thing that makes this so fine is the bursting out effect. This way, that way, coming up the middle. This cluster is a killer. So not only is it damberite, could have been a calcite, it could have been a quartz, but it's damberite. Much, many, many, many times rarer than the two other minerals I mentioned and extremely aesthetic. Usually you get these crystal one here and you might have a little one here, but here you got a cluster. You can be very proud of this. This is a highly important specimen. Well, thanks, Dave. I yeah. appreciate that. 
It's very hard to get these when they're a fine cluster like that. And this is about the epitome, if you want to call it a large, uh, uh, a small, cabinet. large miniature. It's a small cabinet. So anyway, the bottom line is that caught my eye immediately. I'm, I'm very, very happy to see a specimen that's intact. There's no damage to it. All the way you can move that around. Whoever gets a specimen, that's a major thing. Oh, yeah. Highly important specimen. I agree. Uh, this was production again a, a little over a year ago from the Day Copper Mine in China. Okay. And I was luckily. Yeah, it reminds me of English. Uh, yeah. Uh, but that's a wonderful twin crystal just sitting on the matrix there. Did a nice job of trimming. These have, uh, I got lucky and I was able to acquire uh, a handful of these okay. that were very, very superb. Yeah. Because and this was uh, X Peak Bancroft piece. Okay. And uh, I didn't realize that when I acquired it. Uh, and uh, people who recognize the specimen okay. um, did know. Okay. Yeah, this one was part of a larger specimen. Yes. And they trimmed it up and they did a fine job on right. it. It's beautifully done. And this color, it's actually an. an, an what I would call an intense amber-orange color. And uh, the color of this, I have to be honest, about as good as I've ever seen a fluorite be this, this rich, right. rich, rich, rich And it's color. also important because of Freiburg, these are acanthite or argentites okay. on with the fluorite. Because I was going to ask you, what are the little specks there? Yes. It's a complete it's stalactite a complete, so that we don't want to go to the cutters. Yeah, exactly. So that Slice it up like a bologna. Yeah. This thing's kind of heavy. Yeah, I, I <laughs> consider that a highly important displayable specimen. There, there is another specimen. You can use that, put that in a bragging rock. And major museum type specimen. Right, and yeah, it's wonderful. a you know it's a nice pink, and Double. then this is the blood yeah, red inside, yeah. which really makes it unique. Yeah, <laughs> did it again. You got another great set of minerals for us to film and get into our what's hot in Tucson for 2015, and we appreciate well, it. Well, thanks for coming in, yeah. and I always appreciate it, Brian. And we will see you at the main show. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. What's again. going on? Oh, busy. Yeah. Last year when you guys came by, we had specimens of shatakite, yeah. copper silicate. That's not really found typically in good crystallized display specimens. Yeah. And what we had, a lot of them weren't really presentation quality mineral specimens. Mm -hmm. So we've decided to start converting these into lapidary items. Okay. Um, what you've got here is a essentially a polished section yes. of a specimen and if you yeah. turn it on its side you can show people that the botryoidal form is still there and we'll pull out another one yes. to show people oh yeah this is typically what it looks like that's but right once it's been that's polished right. yeah. these beautiful midnight and sky yeah. blue swirling yeah. patterns come out mm -hmm. there's only about 40 to 50 kilos of this stuff that we have and okay. from what i've been told there's not going to be any more of it we have a new discovery from the same mine, the Tantra mine in the Congo, okay. of shatakite oh, coating pseudomorphs Wonderful. of azurite after malachite. Well, how about that? This That's is a good a one cool, here. Yeah, this this one will show all three. This large forest nope, green nope, crystal yeah. is malachite right. after azurite, right. and the entire specimen is coated by crystallized shatakite. That is really cool. And That's so beautiful. Let me go in the back, Okay. I got a couple more things back there, special pieces real to show surprises you. surprises for us. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, as you can tell from the label, mm -hmm. a fluorite right. specimen from oh, the Sunnyside Mine nice. a in San Juan County, Colorado. I've never seen a miniature of this. I had a nice one myself in my collection, but a miniature, right. that's very hard to get. This you is a great see them. example of the classic association that's of right. green fluorite right. and pink rhodochrosite. That's right. This one's actually on sulfide matrix, which yeah. in my experience with the material is a lot more rare. Yeah. Typically you find them on quartz. I like the contrast of the dark sulfides against the fluorite and the baby pink roto. That's right. um, that color of the fluorite is some of the best green you'll ever see because there's a little bit of blue in there. Yeah. I don't know how well it th comes but through see, on the camera. But see what's so nice, keep in mind when it's very small like this, 
the saturation color yep. is usually gone. Here it's holding very good color for such a small yeah, crystal. It's, it's a one inch crystal, yeah. not, maybe if not even a full If this thing was this big, it'd be so Emerald intense. Green. Yeah, intense, exactly. intense green. Oh, that's and, wonderful. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces that because it's pristine, yes. large radiating yes. botryoidal aggregates. And if you turn on the side, see yeah, this? Yeah, look at that. Look, look, at, look the, at that. A circular yeah. form in oh, there. Oh, yeah. It's the beautiful. stuff is really pretty. This one. Beautiful material. And I, I heard of a seven hardness. Yeah, it's a silicate. It's yeah. got great hardness. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, very it, it good. might look like turquoise, but turquoise yeah. is a phosphate. It's that's a lot right. softer. Much softer, yeah. This stuff is great for what it is. Beautiful. It's got to be amongst the finest crystallized shatakite ever found. Never seen found. anything like this. I was told that there was a discovery at this mine at Tantra in the 40s, 70 oh. years ago, and they really haven't found anything of consequence since, oh. and all of this is done. Yeah. This you'll recognize immediately. Oh my, Cassiterite with quartz from Bolivia. This is from the oh famous Voloco mine, right. which right. has produced arguably some of the finest cassiterites in the world. Very much so. Um, it's also the only mine in Bolivia. There's tin all over the place, but good, good so, crystallized cassiterite, even crystals like this, are rarely gemmed. Extreme. And Voloco has actually produced transparent crystals of cassiterite. It's the I only have mine seen in Bolivia. Bit of it. That's the rest right. of the mines, it's always black and opaque. That's right. This one, the luster on here is high fabulous. luster, and you get a little bit of that golden flash inside That's the right. crystals. These are not opaque. They yeah. actually have a little bit of That's color right. in there. Right. Ta-da! Herderite. Oh, right off the bat, yeah. herderite. Yeah, look at that. This is wonderful. Thank you. This is from this 1969 beautiful discovery. Beautiful feldspar crystal. Isn't that wonderful? Microcline. Microcline. White yeah. albite on the back. That's right. This is about a two inch purple and green doubly terminated unrepaired herderite crystal. A lot of these specimens when they came out they lost their color. Yeah. Um, some so of them purple would, in would it. Crazy. Oh you can see there's yeah. a oh, lavender yeah. purple right. in there right and a the nice there. green color on each end of the termination. That's it. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Right. I appreciate it. It's great seeing you. Well, okay. <laughs> Pleasure. Good to see you. Thank you. Welcome to the room. And you got new things to show us. Always. Looking forward to it. Huge hammer guide. Some of these are crude, but they're very large. But this one has a beautiful termination, and the size is wonderful for your advanced collection. Some of these get so big they look like a big log, but that's very good. Very, very, very good. Okay. This is from Shivor Mine. Okay. She'd normally think of emeralds, but uh, this yeah. is a really killer oh, uh, wow, calcite and pyrite specimen. From the Shivor Mine. From the Shivor That's Mine in right. Columbia. Good. Yeah, I so, like that. What a, well, I have some special things in the back, Dave, okay. if you want to go back there. Yeah, we'll sure. Take a look. Yeah. This is a Torbernite. Oh, very good. Yeah. The Democratic Republic perfect, of Congo. Perfect miniature. Where's Phil Gregory? He needs this in his collection. He says, look out for miniatures. Yeah, that's, that's a great beauty. One. Yep. Musanoi mine. Musanoi mine, yep. Yeah. It's got that deep green. Oh, wonderful green. Just, they are the best to me yeah. in the world. Yep. Even better than the French, as good as the French are, but these, these are the best right yeah. here. This is one of the finest uh, examples oh. of this species. It's called melite. Right. It comes from Hungary. That's beautiful, and the it was, lightness. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very so interesting because organic yeah. mineral, yes. uh, and it's very light. Um, oh, that is that absolutely was, superb. Yeah, it was. Smells as good as I, I haven't seen better. I can't remember seeing a better one. This is yeah, a wolfenite from oh, my father's yeah. collection. It's so hard from to get, Sumeb. Yeah, it's so hard to get them and when they're gem. white like this and gem. The combination of the yeah. two. Uh, it's a superb miniature. Wonderful. Okay, Gordon's fluorite. Grill Mine. Isn't that a fluorite beauty? calcite fluorite. with a little sphalerite That's all right. over it? It's yeah. really cute. It really is. A jewel of a specimen. Yep. And uh, it's pretty much a complete yeah. floater. They're etched yeah. on the side, yeah. but uh, yeah, like a double terminate. Yep. Ah, that's beautiful. This here is a beautiful acanthite on oh, calcite. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? From Isolated. Mexico. I love that when they get these sulfides. That, and uh, uh, isolated on a, a, a white matrix like that really shows them all. Yeah, and the white beautiful. calcite's uh, got beautiful. that druzy on it. Yes, so it does. So it have a sugary bright yeah. quartz over it. And a canthite pseudomorph after stephanite. Okay, look at that. Another wonderful miniature. Quite unusual. Oh, yeah. 
especially to see that all, pseudomorph. Yeah, exactly. It's all there too. Uh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Look at That's this boronite. Holy cow! That is fabulous. That's all complete. Yep. All the way around. I can't remember ever seeing a large boronite that I like better than this. This is as good as I've ever seen. This is a major thing. It's all complete. There's no damage on this at all, I can say. But I love yeah, pseudomorphs. As good as this. <laughs> My God, this is fantastic. They're so long and big, and they burst out. Yeah. Yeah, and this is a crystals. And yeah, it, it's a major discovery. It's really yeah. nice at these shows to see yep. new things coming in oh, yeah. like this. So. Oh, I love these when they the with the malachite and shatakite. That's a beautiful yep. piece from the Congo. Love that. That's right. It's beautiful. Oh, that's wonderful. Malachite and shatakite. Yeah, pretty and pretty you famous get those combo. Bursts, and then the petrodal yeah. uh, shatakite mm -hmm. there at the surface there, and then the deeper blue here. Yep. No, Just that's a, a wonderful specimen. piece. No, I love that. Yeah. And there's very few of this type where they have those sprays of uh, malachite crystals. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. You can see down in here, oh, yeah. Dave, mm -hmm. in the bottom. Oh, yeah, look at that. And it goes into, yeah, there, isn't so that neat? Yeah, I'm glad you did that. Yeah, you know you're a specimen. Yeah, yeah you it's can quite... see the betrothal part of the shatter yeah. kite. Yeah. No, that's, that's a winner. Cute. Thanks. Thank you. Soon. Robert. Dave, it's good to see you. Nice seeing you too. Again. Thanks for stopping in. These are really amazing specimens. You got two of them there. This is the best of the two. And what's so fine with this is that it's all there. It's, it looks almost like a burl crystal. Yes. And here it really is a trifling. You have the twinning, of course. But what's different about the habit, it's really different. This yes. habit is really quite different yeah. than other ones because it's fat and it's almost roundish. Yes. Yeah, because of that, it's all gem and it's a beautiful pale yellow green. This is just a lovely, lovely crystal. And what I'm very pleased is that you were able to get a cut stone of this yes. type of material. Can yes. you bring that out as oh, well? Oh, I would love to. Yeah. This is about 18 centimeters tall and about five centimeters wide. So give, give the people listening and looking at this a sense of how large it is. Exactly. And this is 339 carats, which at this moment, uh, it was cut by Viktor Tuzlikov. It has 103 facets and two natural faces, one natural right okay. here and then one natural on the collet. Okay. And uh, well, it that's is a beautiful set. Dave, one of the things I wanted to share with you about this particular spodumene, this triphane, it was a surprise to us when Victor handed it to us after in, in Denver. Uh, we had several people standing around. I happened to have my, my laser uh, uh, light with me uh, fluorescence and I put this on and what wow. we discovered is this stone fluoresces orange. Oh, that's wonderful. Let's move it around into the... It's wild. See, it's bouncing off the refraction off yeah. the back faces there. Yes. Yeah, it's that's really spectacular. Beautiful. Yeah, re regular orange. Yeah, this would be more what they call the the toenail side. It may on an angle fit in the one inch cube being a thumbnail. Yes. But what's good about it, it's a stout, fatty crystal. And these are very rare to begin with. They are. Let alone one like this. So anyway, the thing about this thing is it's, it's just a fabulous thumbnail. Any thumbnail collector would die to have this, let alone an important piece for yes. the collection, period. Yeah. Don't want to mislead you there. No. Yeah, no, that's fine. It definitely it crystallized does. all the way around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sheet I see, I like that. That's why yeah. I turned it here yeah. to make sure Brian gets that angle there. That is uh, 22.9 ounces of gold. Well, that uh, hold me off for that, a while. You take that. <laughs> yeah, I'll check your pockets before you leave. Yeah, That's exactly. Uh, <laughs> well, if you look at the map and you see yeah. where the Venezuelans are mined, yes, this continues on into okay. Brazil. So it's probably in the same general area. Exactly. These are Mato Grosso's. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. The, the, this is great crystallization. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah. That, what a pair. Yes. This came out in uh, October of 2014. Okay. And there were uh, maybe a hundred, I think, so or so specimens, and there were only a few that had the true Savorite color. Exactly. This is this is uh, one of them. Yeah. Uh, and we believe the largest uh, of the find. Yeah. Largest I've seen yeah. kept intact. Without kept intact. Right. Right. Yeah. Without cutting it up. That's right. This is. Uh, 
just a little bit of information, Yugawara Light, it was named after Yugawara Light, uh, Yugawara Light Springs in Japan off yeah. on Honshu Island, and, and that's, that's where it comes from. that's this crystal right here. Yeah. In the VOG, go ahead. It has a gyrolite next to it, okay. has a, a spray of calcites down the side. Okay. And what's n interesting about this particular piece is that it is, it is completely intact, exactly. completely terminated glass top with a pearlized finish on the inside, which is typical of Yugoar light. Yes. But it also has three Yugoar lights and actually doubly terminated on the one side where it, before it goes into the... Um, the, the quartz, so very it's a good. very, very yeah. fine you go or light. Yeah. This crystal. is a zeolite. Yeah, zeolite, yes. Wonderful. What have you. Thank Robert, you for visiting. We much very much appreciate your appreciate presence it. here and your knowledge. Hi, Wally. How you doing? Good to see you again. Yeah, I see beautiful Hi, 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 how are you? Good to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> nice seeing you again. Okay, what you have here is a native bismuth, and these are razor-sharp crystals. When I had... Uh, had crystals similar to the size, but they're more etched, skeletal, yeah. what have you. Um, I have to be honest, the best one I've ever seen. That doesn't mean it is the best. It's the best I have seen. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen quite a few minerals, so just take for what, what I'm saying, just take it for whatever you feel. But see this thing, the spike here? This is a wonderful specimen. But what I'll say, what's fine about it is the isolation of the crystals on the light matrix background and the state of Washington. Um, are they a uh, essonite? What type of garnet is it? It's um, uh, a hessonite. Hessonite. Okay, yes. very good. Well, that's a lovely piece. And to be honest with you, I can't remember. I've seen hessonite garnets, but they're all kind of together. Yep. So here you got the isolation and the size of the crystals with the contrast. Oh, that's a lovely piece. You see, I see etching in that, and that's not even a break. For a minute, I thought that was broken, but it's all etching. Uh, that's a beautiful thing. In combination with the color, yep. not only beautiful crystals, but it has that color. And I don't think this area is produced anymore. They're nope. out of collection. You just get it out of a collection. Yeah, that's a lovely piece. Most of the remaining ones were very well known. They were in a sphere with many small needles. Yep. Then I had one that was kind of like a hand and everything. But this this here, the average person say, oh, what a lovely, like you say, Chinese. Yep. Yep. But that's Romania. And that's extraordinary because yep. you have actually a cabinet specimen loaded with razor sharp terminated crystals. And I congratulate you on this. I've never seen anything like this from Romania. Yep. This is wonderful. Isn't that a beautiful thing with stibnites coming off? No. Nope. What uh, are they? That's uh, arsenopyrite. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah, they sure are. For like this, it looks like stibnite until yep. you start yep. examining it. Well, that's pretty darn good. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah. thing. From Greece. From Greece, yes. And that's a great specimen. Now this, what's so fine is this, uh, what they call the ram's horn type of uh, uh, native silver, but this is from Germany. Yeah. Yeah, this is not Konsberg. And this is a lovely thing. This is what you call real aesthetics. And silver, native silver of this character, this quality, the rams, this thing is nothing but a postcard, wonderful, about as good as I've seen from Germany. Yeah, yeah I rare, mean, this yeah. is a very rare thing. I really like this. Thank really, you, Dave. Really it was a beautiful. pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ladies first, how you doing? <laughs> Seeing you once again, and got you, Tim. Hi, how you doing? doing you got well. your wonderful Amazonites here on display, like we talked about in your room at the hotel there. And this is really like the talk of the show. Never in the history of my life did I've ever seen such wonderful specimens to begin with, and then uh, the work that you put into cleaning them up and preparing them for exhibit. This well, thank you, Dave. Um, what I did here is this is mainly the the big piece or the king as we call it and yes. it uh, was found from the icon pocket okay. uh, it took me about two and a half years to clean and prep wow. what we have in front of us okay. here yeah. um, most of that was uh, fit finding so okay. it's where we lay out the pocket on you know tables and just click it all back together um, this is the largest single amazonite combination complete specimen that we know of to exist right now one of the best specimens period I've ever seen to be honest with you well, thank, thank you. you very much thank Appreciate you it. Thanks a lot. Dave, 
so good to see you. Mm -hmm. Nice. We're standing here in front of this fabulous case of your Barber bottles and, your and our minerals. minerals. Yes. <laughs> this case, Dave, has just been a blessing. Many people come here and are just drawn to the vibrant colors. Yes. And a lot of the pairings that I made with your bottles weren't even necessarily color, sometimes just a shape or a texture such as the frog. Exactly. We chose 16 bottles. Yes, by emailing pictures and all that, and you Dave worked Wilbur off of that. Dave emailed. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah I, uh, <laughs> I'm so bad at the computer, it's sad. It was delightful, Dave, yeah. and I received the picture of maybe 24 bottles, and I chose 16. That's correct. And I printed them out and laid them on a table, and I went shopping around my house. And Very I good. said, this one and this one, and I laid them out and it was such a joy. And considering that we're using pictures, That's I think right. we did very well. You did extremely well. So the bottom line, Dave, yes. is that this case <laughs> is really um, popular amongst the crowd because it shows things other than just minerals. Yeah. It shows beautiful barber bottles. And thank you for educating everybody about the beauty of these bottles and the significance. Yeah. So we really appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. He's hot in Tucson. <laughs> there he is. Congratulations. You won Thank the you. Uh, Desatel's trophy, the whole thing. Uh, is there something before that? You won kind of like two, two uh, the categories. Lindstrom. The Lindstrom. So you won the Lindstrom and the Desatel's trophy last oh, yeah. night when yes. at the banquet, and deservingly so. Thank you. Yeah, you got a wonderful collection here. Needless to say, it always turns me on to say of greatness of Kunzite in Matrix. You got a real killer there. That that is so. Per it's a textbook crystal with the quartzite with all bite right in the dead center of the specimen. I was never interested in Kunzite before because it's just a stick, and I just thought that's they were right. okay. That's right. And then Rob Levinsky showed me that one on Matrix, and I'm just like, wow, it's a yeah. that's a Kunzite I can that's get around. That's a major Kunzite. Needless to say, everything you've got in here is just wonderful. The silver there is just absolutely magnificent, and. Uh, 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 it's like a bonsai tree. Yes. Uh, these silvers are really great. And it's and got a couple old cubes on the left arm there. I don't know if you noticed that. Yes, I do see that. Then you got one of the great uh, uh, blue cap tourmalines from the tourmaline queen mine that came out. I think you used to own that one somewhere yeah, way back then. Yeah, I did way back then. <laughs> I was very proud of it. And what's good about that crystal, besides being perfect, it's unrepaired. Right. That is very rare on the better ones. Right. Very few unrepaired of the ones that, that you call real greatness. So you can be proud of that. Thank you. That was a major specimen in my collection, one of the best. Well, Dave, when I, I went to the Smithsonian and I saw the uh, candelabra, yes, and that was what blew my mind and made me want to collect minerals. That was the first thing that triggered it for me was the candelabra. Yeah. So when I saw the opportunity to get a blue cap, uh, I said, I have to have a blue cap because that's, that's what started good. for me. Absolutely right. Got a beautiful uh, aquamarine with the matrix, with the smoky quartz, the feldspar. What is the little ball there? Oh, it's, it's a, a spacerine garnet in there. Okay. Now that is really unusual. Isn't I that haven't wild? seen that. These, you don't these see that combination like that. pieces always are interesting to me. I like. I wish I could see a video of the formation. Like here's these little yes. specertine atoms saying, "I got to go right there in that exactly. ball right there," and here's the aqua atoms. I got to go in that aqua That's cross right. right there. It's just it amazes yeah. everybody. Thank and you. needless yeah. to say, you have a beautiful rhodochrosite, and uh, you can be proud of that. And the way you did this with the coloration, uh, how you fix this case up, it's wonderful. Now you have one. High Highly important mineral I also used to own. What do you think it is in there? There's one other specimen I own. Uh, the gold? Come, the gold. Okay. That from the state of Washington, that was offered to me, and uh, it's the finest one I've ever seen. And I recognized it immediately uh, when I went through your case. I said, that's the gold from Washington. I always wonder what happened to it. I did sell it, and I don't know who, I can't even remember who got the piece, but that is one hell of a fine gold. You can be proud of that. So I bought that from a rock shop in Virginia City called the Marshall okay. Mint. Okay. And uh, you, Roy Marshall. You, Roy Marshall, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. Yes. Just sitting in his, and then I was like, wow. Unbelievable. And but he's probably the one that bought it from me then. Probably so. Yeah. I think he had it for 20 or 30 years, a and long that time. That would be the case. Yeah. I couldn't remember who I sold it to, 
beautiful fluorite here. Look at that. Just absolutely gemmy. That was uh, Danny Trinchillo's father's piece. He oh. brought it out from Russia when Danny was 19 years old. Wow. And uh, okay. a couple years ago, uh, I saw it. I had another one. I had the old Asselborn down in Gorsk. And uh, Danny showed me this piece, and I said, oh, my gosh, this is so much finer. So I uh, fortunately sold the Asselborn piece and bought this instead. Good for you. Yep. This is very hard to get. When you yes. get these uh, Smithsonites in that color, they're, they're much rarer than the other colors to get green uh, smithsonite, smithsonite like that. that that's a wonderful and piece. And Marshall Sussman brought that out. Oh, he used he to own did. that piece. Okay. And then naturally, always these beautiful rose ones, they're always right up there among the favorites of the uh, fluorites. Two, two years ago, this won the uh, best small cabinet fluorite at the fluorite theme show here two years ago. Oh, that's nice, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I caught that immediately when yep. I saw. Yep. Then you got a topaz on Matrix here from Pakistan. That was Pakistan. Herbabotas. Yeah, it stands to reason. He got the best of those. Yeah, that's fabulous. And even this with the Apophyllite uh, being a perfect bush on the Matrix, uh, these are hard to get with that rich green color. That, that's not a common thing to get. Danny, Danny Trinchillo and Stuart Walensky both own that one. Uh, I, I didn't get it from Casey Pandy, but Casey Pandy said that was the finest one he's ever brought out before. So that's the uh, New Mexican locate. Boy, they, they found wonderful pieces of this. Collectors are so happy that it's a big enough pocket that other collectors could get a piece of it as well. That's a beautiful example of it. Uh, then your Morganite with the Matrix. Uh, it's the color that this uh, brings that uh, has more importance to it because the color on it is uh, uh, much deeper than average. Yeah. That, that was Gene Myron's piece, and it took me two years to get him to, to convince them to sell it to me. I had a I had a Kongsberg Silver that used to be owned by King Gustav of Sweden, and uh, he wanted that because he's building a silver collection. I yes. wanted that, so eventually yeah. you worked out. Uh, worked out very uh, well. You can be proud of that because yeah. it has that good deep color to it. You know, people ask me what I would walk out of here with. You'd be surprised how many people pick that as their favorite mineral in the case. Yeah, well, it's a very unusual thing, and it's very, very difficult to get double terminated crystals, let alone have it on a quartz crystal like that. This gets my eye, this calcite. That is so unusual. I mean, there's calcite and calcite. Calcite's the second most common mineral on the earth. Quartz is first. But that thing is just, it, it's like a... a, a Fairyland inside there. <laughs> All those inclusions in there really, really, really caught my eye. And it's so uh, pristine, it, it almost looks like it was man made. Yeah. Wonderful piece. Well, it did come from China. So. That's right. So. <laughs> <laughs> you wonder. <laughs> you really do have a, ma a magnificent co collection, Barry. Thank congratulations you. And congratulations and congratulations for the trophy. Thank well you. deserved. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks your so time. Much. I'm really well. Thank you, Dave. I'm very impressed with this beautiful case and its meaning. It's unique, and I think it was a wonderful idea what you did. And Thank worked you. very hard putting this together. I think it's Sorry. unique, and uh, uh, I'm proud of you because you. It, it's so sad that uh, we have a disease, cancer, that strikes women so often, mm. and uh, let's hope they can get this thing cured Wouldn't some that way. Wouldn't be nice? Yeah. That would and they're nice. working on it slowly and slowly. Are, they are improving it. Um, this year, the case is not a tribute to all breast cancer survivors. This is a tribute to many of the breast cancer survivors in the mineral world. Yes. And what I did was I, I, I sent a message out if any of you are breast cancer survivors or have close family who are breast cancer survivors or, sadly, people who did not survive, please um, consider putting a rock in. And some of these are in memory of people who have passed. Exactly. But many of these rocks are not only mine as a breast cancer survivor, but other yeah. women in the community. Very and good. so they've given me, um, not didn't have to be pink, but many of them chose to put pink in. So, um, and all of these are names of women who have had breast cancer. And as you can see, this is probably a tiny portion exactly. of, of all, if everybody in this show mentioned how many women had breast cancer in their families, it would just be, you, you could fill this oh, yeah. it's unbelievable. a million times over. Cancer. It's truly a tribute. Yeah. And as I stood in front of this case over the last few days, so many women have come to me. I have cried so often. They've come to me and told me about their own personal stories 
they've told me about losing sisters at 30 years old yeah, and so 35 sad. years old yeah. and mothers and grandmothers grandmothers who made it into old age only to have to die by a terrible exactly. means and so I think it's really important that not only is there breast cancer awareness which luckily is is an ongoing awareness program but that you really do have to pay attention to your own body well, you that really that is do true. and so I am joyous and sad yes. both but I'm joyous about the women who have survived and are in my life and your life that's great. that are still roaming and collecting minerals and yeah. loving it well congratulations thank You've you so very much Dave thank you I appreciate keep it keep up the good work I will thank you we were in Munich some years months ago and we saw Chris with his marvelous Greek minerals and by golly here he is in Tucson. Chris, good to see you again. Good to see you, Bob. Yeah, thank you for coming. That must have been, yeah, been some adventure to get here. Yes it was, yeah. but I did it. There you are. I had okay. to do it. Okay. It's an honor. Yeah. Now you, you have some specimens that we saw in Munich and I'd like to talk about them a little bit. On the back line is a tetrahedrite that is really well, amazing. Actually, this is not a tetrahedrite, it's a tenondite, oh, okay. which is a lot more rare. Okay. And the quality for the species, I think, is superb. You, you don't see this luster and these big, sharp crystals in tenondite from many worlds in yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah. And from Greece, my gosh. Yes. That, yeah, that's what amazes me about your suite of minerals. You've got things that people just have not heard of from Greece. They've been there. But we always think about larium or la labrium as yes. it's pronounced with its, uh, you know, lead minerals. But you've got all sorts of things here. Well, that's true, and I think this is a good opportunity to show people what uh, Greek minerals are real yeah, about. The yeah, the range of minerals. Yeah. The, in the center, for instance, the beautiful azurite. Yeah, this is a very yeah. nice azurite. It is an old specimen. It was found about 30 years ago wow. in the Christiana mine. Uh -huh. Uh, specimens uh, this big are very rare from Greece, and this one has got a very nice color, yeah. a nice sugary luster. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Just above that's a rhodochrosite. Yeah, my the, rhodo golly. the rhodochrosite is one of my favorites. You see the big rhombohedral crystals, they're like four centimeters in length. Yeah, yeah. And this, uh, this comes from uh, northern Greece, actually, from the Cassandra mines. Okay. This is an old locality, it's not producing anymore. I, I got it from an old collection from a miner in the locality, yeah, and it's one of my favorites. I'm familiar with some of the atomites that have come out of Lavrium, and I see one over there that's a really good sized piece. That's a very interesting piece because the atomite is both Cuprian and the luminous. You can see the aluminum atomite has a blue color, and the Cuprian one has a green color. You, you can see both colors in this specimen, that? and there are Smithsonites on top of them. My gosh. Imagine what was going on in the pocket when that developed. There must have been two or three different solutions that got yes, in Yes, yes indeed. Yeah, really something. That's crazy. One, one specimen that, uh, that intrigues me is this sort of grayish, pinkish, long quartz. Is that a quartz? Yeah, this is a quartz and this is a scepter actually. Oh. Uh, the, <clears throat> the lower bottom is prasm, green quartz with Hedenbergite inclusions. And, uh, the other end is uh, a methysting quartz. Okay, yeah. That's Very an old unusual. find from Serifos. Yeah, the bicolor is really kind of unusual. Yeah, I love a lot of these little jobs here. They're, you know, we've got some alinorite, my gosh. Yes. You know, that's a rare one from yes. there. They are very rare. Yeah. They actually are a, a recent find, but crystals that big from Greece, that's unique. Yeah. Well, this is a marvelous chance for people here in America to see some a great variety uh -huh. of Greek minerals, something that I really doubt they understand. And this will give them a chance to, to, you know, to get a good look at some of the really fine things that have come from Greece. Well, that's, that's my point. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate, appreciate you bringing it, Chris. It's an honor. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank and you. look forward Thank to seeing you, so you in Munich again. Of course. All right. Course you will. <laughs> to Dr. Erica, Erica Kruger and her husband, a new museum has developed that is pictured here. Let me show you a photograph in this magazine. This building is what we now see in the drawing uh, in this exhibit. So it has come through many centuries of agony and now has been refurbished and ready to go. Okay. We bought this old house and it was just a ruin. Mm -hmm. So we had to replace all the walls and 
everything, the electric uh, installation and the heating installation, it's, it, everything was gone. My goodness. So, and it took, took us about uh, four to five years Did it? to renovate it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Germany is known for its classics, you know, the, the lead minerals, like pyromorphite, things like that. And this case has a number of very, very fine old classic German minerals. There's a wonderful silver back in there. This kind of silver in Freiburg is very rare. Yeah. Uh, that's why I bought it. Okay. Uh, you know the bio-like silver. Yes. In many cases you can see, but the crystallized silver is you have not so often found. Right. Yes. Right. And so this is something special. Okay. Yeah. If you look closely at that, it's very well crystallized. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Of course, pyromorphites are. I mean, that, that's the German uh, icon almost. It's so popular and so well done. There's one down here that I think yes. is very exceptional. Yes, it's a fantastic specimen. Yeah. It's a pseudomorphic structure of Galena after pyromorphite. Right. I think at this quality you find this only in Germany. Yeah, and the, the crystals are very large and sharp. Really a nice cluster. Yeah, mm -hmm. excellent, excellent. And of course, German fluorites. Um, you know, they're, they're, they rival those from England and now China. It's wonderful. Well, anyone who goes to Europe now has to put on their travel list this marvelous exhibit. And I want to thank you very much for being here. It's my and pleasure. You're to be commended on this marvelous exhibit that people must come to see. I hope everybody will come. They will. And I'm sure they will. look at it. Yeah. We are waiting for that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your help. Tony. How are you hey, doing? Great to see you. Great seeing you too, and you have a killer piece I remember years ago. Back to Martin Ehrman. That's correct. Martin that, Ehrman had it. That is right. But I have no idea where Martin got it. No, but uh, he sold it to... He sold it to uh, Ed Harrison. Ed Harrison. Right, who was on it. the museum's Board of Governors. Exactly. Actually, for quite a long time, he was uh, the chairman of the Board of Governors. That is correct, yeah. And he bought it in 1964 and immediately loaned it to the museum. Fantastic. And then we and it uh, just had it on stayed display. There. Yeah. yeah, for years. And he donated it in 1988. Okay. That specimen, I would give my heart to have it. Oh, I wanted that specimen so bad I could taste it. What do you yeah. think? Uh, a lot of people think it's the best in the world. It's the best I've seen in the United States for sure, but I'm not qualified to answer if it is the best that ever came out of that. Uh, one of the best. Uh, yeah, certainly one, of the, one best, of the best, but the best I've seen in the United States. But this thing here, I never forgot. Always, and not Wonderful. me, everybody. Everybody wanted this piece. No, you, you can be proud of that. Well, one thing I didn't realize yeah. until I was just looking at an article about uh, Knappenwand. Yeah. This is actually the 150th anniversary of the discovery of the wow. epidote deposit at Knappenwand. Wow, how discovered interesting. Discovered in Very 1865. Good. Holy cow, that's fantastic. And so what better mineral to have here? Isn't that the truth? To symbolize Western very Europe. Very fits yeah. in very well. I'm not sure about the Eiffel Tower, but uh, <laughs> yeah. this is the Knappenwand Tower. Yeah, there okay, you go. Okay, they're both iconic. <laughs> so, <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this is a really fine exhibit. Really like it. Well, that. thank you. But what a wonderful epidote. Ah, it brings back fond memories. Well, anyway, congratulations. Good Thank work. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. How are you doing? Good to see you again, Dave. Yeah. So every year you guys participate in our every, show here. We've done this, I believe this is about our 25th wow. or 26th year. This one in particular catches my eye. It's a stopper across the room practically. Well, you have to. the fluoride on oh. the snow, snow white matrix. Sometimes you see it on the quartz and what have you. But when you see that contrast and the way this thing has uh, all been set up, uh, form, the wonderful crystals, top color, and this is an unbelievable it's, it's a fine super piece. piece. Yeah. It wasn't hard for us to choose that from our club member to bring into the case. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. That, that, look at the color blue like that. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's ex extraordinary. You got a very fine manganite. You got a very fine silver. How many collectors do you think are represented here? In this case, we have on our board in the back over there. I think there's 15 participants this year, oh, if I okay. remember right. Oh, you. Exactly. <laughs> Carl, thanks Dave. a lot. Really it's been a pleasure. It. Thank you for coming by and letting the MAD group publicize a little yeah. bit and help the hobby. Yeah.
we really appreciate it. Hi, Herb. Hi, Bob. Herb oh, nice yeah. to see you again. Well, it was good to see yeah. you. Now that you're retired from being a dealer, you come up with the darndest things. Well, this is really something. Well, thank you. This is in San Francisco, in San and Francisco. it was for a special event. That's correct. It was uh, the Pan Pacific um, International Exposition, okay. which uh, basically commemorated the finishing of the Panama Canal, oh, okay. and also coincidentally the 400th uh, anniversary of the discovery of the Pacific Ocean by Balboa. Oh, for gosh sakes. Which was Interesting. Like, yeah, yeah, by yeah. like two or yeah, three years. But they used it, yeah, so they used it for that. The, the tower that they built was 435 feet high, yeah. just nine years after the big quake that destroyed the city. <laughs> and so, and they, and they call it the Tower of Jewels. It was basically the ah. centerpiece of the whole thing. You can see it's the the highest structure in the whole fair. Right. So that Tower of Jewels must have some relationship to what's on display Exactly. Here. These particular gems that were cut out of glass from Bohemia were okay. strung up and down. There was 102,000 102, of them really? you know, on that building. My gosh. And um, they kind of waved in the wind. They were all designed by a lighting engineer that worked for General Electric. And he see. was on loan to them. or you know, doing uh, yeah, consulting yeah. work for them. And they, they also had them illuminated by carbon arc lamps, which were also just recently... Fairly new development. Yeah, new development yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And probably, I would imagine in the day, it must have been sort of like a laser show. They were actually sold at the fair in, in one of two ways. They were either okay. sold as souvenirs, like these two. Okay. They were sold as souvenirs at the fair. You could buy them for yeah. three or four dollars. And... Um, people that visited the fair also had the option to buy one of these jewels. Oh. One of them that was actually hanging on a tower. I see. And for the payment of one dollar, you were issued this little certificate, like you can see over there, a yeah, pink, yeah, that pink yeah. certificate. You were issued that, and, um, and it says that when the tower is being dismantled after the fair because it doesn't exist anymore. Okay, so after the next earth earthquake, you could go collect your gem. Yeah, right. <laughs> so they, they they were taken down and they were mailed to the people. Oh, well, thanks, Herb. Nice seeing yeah, you again. Good, always hope, good to hope see. Hope to you. see you next year with something active, some something else Glad special. Glad to hear. Good. Thanks. Bye bye. Okay, bye. We're standing by the uh, Rice Northwest Gem and Mineral Museum, which is my favorite museum. It's a marvelous museum up near Portland about 25 miles west in Hillsboro. And I'd like to introduce Julian Gray, who is the executive director yes. of the museum, and Leslie Moclock, who is the curator. It's a great team. Leslie, tell me something about the minerals you've got here. Well, as you know, the theme for the show was minerals from Western Europe. So right. when I started to make the case, I wanted to find some of our really eye-popping uh, classic specimens. And you and did. <laughs> you Believe me, you did. Thank you so much. Um, I think it's hard to miss the pyromorphite from <laughs> the large mine. Um, and we have some other nice uh, little pyromorphite specimens as well. This one from Germany uh, is actually a um, very classic specimen. There's a label on the back that you can't see that has a date of 1894. Wow. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to figure out whose collection it was in, but it's certainly been, been around the mineral collecting world for, for quite some time. Sure, sure. Um, some of the other uh, particularly exciting things in the case are the phosgenite in the back left corner over there. Uh, at one time, it was the largest known specimen in the world. There have been a couple that have been found that are maybe one or two centimeters bigger on either mm -hmm. side, but yeah. it's still really a fine uh, specimen. And, and that, that's just one of a small suite of phosgenites you have at the museum. Yes, yes, we yeah. do have other crystals, but that one's the big daddy, so I yeah. thought I'd bring yeah. that one. It's marvelous. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and there are minerals in the case uh, that are not from Western Europe because what I, what I realized is that some of our very fine Western European specimens were all lead minerals. And uh -huh. one of the things that I like to do, um, I, you know, everybody likes to have a case theme. And I'm very focused on education. We're a museum, and the museum is very focused on education. Mm -hmm. So I decided to uh, fill out the display with other lead minerals from Western Europe and, and other localities and to talk about lead, because people generally think of it as this sort of dull It has a metal. negative context. Yeah, 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 a, yeah exactly. they're worried about lead poisoning. And, mm. and then you look at, say, the, the red cloud mine wolfenite, and maybe you start to reevaluate your ideas of what lead can do for you. Um, so there's a little bit of information on uh, the science of some of the crystal structures. Uh, several of the specimen species in here are isostructural. And what I tried to do was take uh, the very technical jargon 
of mineralogy that we are well versed in because we studied it for many years and try to put that in plain English so Good. that any visitor Good. on the street could for try me. to understand that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I also added a little, a little bit of historical information about um, lead mining and lead use throughout the ages. So I, I tried to give a little bit of something for everyone, some classic excellent mineral specimens, some science and history, and, and put it all together for people to enjoy. Good. You know, when I first saw this case, I began looking, and I realized, my gosh, you've got classics from everywhere, and they're marvelous. Another pyromorphite here from Germany. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're just, just really, really fine classics. And I, as I said to you earlier, this case to me is the finest case of classic minerals in the show. Thank you. Thank you. Really beautiful. A little bit about the museum. Now, I've known the Rices since I got to know them in Tucson at the Tucson show in the old Quonset hut back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And they were always most generous, most kind. Mm -hmm. And at that time, and, and until fairly recently, this was a privately funded, privately owned museum that was in their home. A gorgeous setting among the trees. But now, with Julian as a director, they're moving more and more toward a, a more stable financial situation. And he's, he can tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, this is a, an important period of transition for the museum because what we're doing is we're going from the, um, what started as a private collection in a private home, the Rices, and they, they were very passionate about their collecting hobby. <laughs> and it was a hobby, but yeah. it was a very serious hobby, and it grew and grew and grew, and they allowed people into their home, and it eventually became a, an uh, institutionalized uh, formally as a museum, and right. a established as a 501c3 not-for-profit museum in 19, uh, 1996. Okay. Um, but what we're doing now is the museum is transitioning from the family-owned, family-controlled um, museum into now something that will be uh, a museum for the ages, something that will be Great. going for generations yeah, to come. Good. Good. And so we are now, we filed um, t for the transition from, public, uh, from a private foundation to public charity. Uh, we're doing a lot of right. fundraising, a lot more formal grant writing, uh, things like that, trying to do some some more formal uh, things to, to uh, get the museum on a much more stable footing good, than ever good, before. Good, and great. we're going to be around, and the collection is fabulous. Uh, oh. People should come see it. And, um, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. It's a real gem of a museum. Yeah. I'm proud to be part of the team that, uh, yeah. that uh, is uh, now maintaining that museum. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the Rices have been involved with minerals for decades. Helen Rice was one of the founders of the Northwest Federation of Mineral Societies, and she worked with uh, Arthur Flagg from Arizona, who uh, also was involved in that, and they were very much a part of the establishment of the American Federation of Mineralogical Societies. So Helen particularly, who is a mineral lover, really ha has played a role for decades in the mineral hobby. Right, and, and she was active in forming the Oregon Agate Mineral Society okay. and a number of other local or uh, yeah. organizations in the Hillsboro uh, area and involved in fascinating you can't go anywhere practically and, and not hear her name or some exactly. connection exactly yeah. and Richard Richard was more of a lapidary type right. wasn't he yeah he loved yeah, petrified wood, wood and, uh, and then uh, and then his son that was uh, passed on to the grand uh, to his son and grandson also so right. uh, so Bill Harvey senior and junior also uh, loved the jump cutting so, good yeah. and that, but that shows the variety that you'd find at the museum you'll find everything from lapidary to moon rocks to some of the world's finest minerals, you know, uh, the Alma Queen. I, mean, just, I, I don't have to even describe it. It's so well known. Yeah, that's our icon so, specimen. Yeah, yeah, right. It's a great, yeah. great museum. Yeah. And anyone who's in the Northwest who fails to go to the Rice <laughs> is guilty of a sin, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Julian, thanks for all your all right. information. Thanks, Bob. It's great. All right. Yeah, you give Leslie a hug for me. Okay. She's yeah. Very astute yeah, young lady. In Leslie is uh, up and coming curator. She's yeah. going to do very well. Yeah, She's uh, done very really, good. really a good one. Okay, thanks. All right, thanks, Bob. Hey, hey. Hey. Nice seeing you. I'm happy you're right at your case because we do see cases that have wonderful minerals with pictures or paintings of the specimen. I think that's so cool. Okay. Uh, we've got an, an, an Elbaite from the type locality in yes. Italy. Uh, the two in the middle there is a Swiss uh, anatase at the bottom okay. and a Spanish cinnabar at the top. Very and they're good. both micro specimens. They're sitting at the back on that round yes. uh, display thing. 
We've got a German pyromorphite on the right. Okay. Um, we've got a bearite sitting at the back there, okay. and then we've got the Austrian fluorite uh, at the front. Well, you did a beautiful job in this thing. Like, uh, this is an unusual fluorite. It's because, very unusual. Yeah, it's a very unusual fluorite, and you did really a wonderful job in uh, capturing that. And that's my favorite thing in here. But you did a wonderful job with this. And I'm going to repeat it again. When they do the paintings of the specimen, it adds real spice to having that specimen. And it's, it's good fun doing it as well. Yeah, it is. Really yeah, is. you're enjoying doing it. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Can, can, oh, Thank you, Dave. Your, congratulations. Thank you have a beautiful place. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? I was oh walking by your booth. <laughs> what caught my eye instantly. Yeah. It was this from a distance, and I knew right away what it was. Kermicite. Good. And the reason I caught it, because this is one of the natural ways kermicite formed, a little differently than the stibnites, because they're so tightly grouped together, these crystals, and a different uh, chemical yeah. difference between the right. two. But what caught my eye... It's the best one I've ever seen. I've never seen one even close to this. Kermicite is many, many times rarer well, than It's a rare stimuli. mineral. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a rare mineral. mineral. Yeah. It was known from Germany, and there was another place besides That's Germany. Right. I forget now where that was at, but yeah. it's been many years ago. Madagascar oh, or somewhere yeah. in that very, area. Very, uh, very rare. This, 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 uh, well, it's, it's a rare piece. And wonderful thing. Well, you know, years ago, when we were searching for these things, myself and a friend of mine, Steve Moorhead, we found these in the bottom of a barrel in a Chinese room. Wow. And we'd unpack about five barrels of stuff, and down the bottom, uh, Steve pulls us out, and he says, Hey, Gene, this is a weird-looking stibnite. And I oh. said, I, I don't think so. Let me take it outdoors and get the color. Ooh. When I took it outside, it said it in a little red color. Yeah, that's and right. And I knew it was a kermicite. That's right, exactly. And, and so the guy had uh, three more, but they were smaller pieces. Yes. So I was able to buy all four of them. And then many years ago, this is back, I don't know, somewhere in the, maybe the 1990s, middle oh, 1990s. okay. I sold it to my friend Rukin Jokes, who was a major mineral collector. Oh. Okay. And when he passed away last year, then I got the collection. Oh, this is the only piece in the collection. Very yeah. good. You did it again. Oh, Congratulations. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. I think that's really great. Yeah, it is. It's good. Hey, Dave. We saw each other the other day, and you got a setup here that is quite unbelievable. So, thank you very much, Dave. Yeah. I just come up, you know, it was uh, about five, six years ago when we manage our special exhibits in Munich. Okay. Uh, we realized that all the collectors have some problems, you know to, to um, put the, their collections in digital Excel sheets exactly. or whatever. Exactly. And uh, so we came up with this idea to program a new software actually yeah. to handle that much better. Uh -huh. And what we realized also is that all the collectors using iPhones and tablets, exactly. something like that, oh, very yeah. normal. Right, right. Uh, but we, you know, managing your collection are still at the 90s exactly. with Excel sheets and everything like that. Exactly. And so we said, come on, we have to create a software or something which makes it very easy to handle your collection. If we would go, for example, to some to some uh, oh, specimen, you, you can just touch it, it and yeah. you see it blowing up. Yep. You can scroll up and see the the the, the dimensions. You see everything this in one fabulous. one thing. You can select some some other pictures we oh. took here. Okay, go that. You can also go to a big. Um, uh, here, big pictures, you know, to show somebody. If you want to put in new objects in your system, you just go into new oh. and say, okay, you can choose from a disc. We can choose from the disc here, for example, like this, and open this, oh. and then here it is. And let's type in species oh, like rhodochrosite, yeah. and the database will come up with, exactly. with the minerals here. Rhodo and we have here rhodochrosite, and let's go for, let's say, Sweet Home, okay? okay. So we know that it's from Sweet Home Mine, right. Colorado. So the, the system knows, okay, it's Sweet Home Mine, Colorado, from the, from the United States. Yes. You just push it, and it fill out each field automatically. Okay. We will try to find our rhodo, which we put in here, and okay. we say search, and say rhodo, ro search. Here you go. See that? Oh, that's wonderful. So here it is. 
So, so simple. It, it's so um, also, this platform is not only interesting for collectors, sure. it's always very interest. It's also very interesting for dealers because the dealers okay. themselves, they have uh, their own collections, sure, of course, sure, but they sure. have a lot of specimen in stock. That's right. So they can very easily handle their stock over this system and uh, they can, they can um, I would say, put in all the informations, all, also their own informations, like how, for, for how many or how much money I purchased that specimen right. from whom, etc. Right. So all the history will be saved in there. Yes. And then when they sell uh, this, they can, and, and a collector comes on his iPhone and has, his, has the same app on his she iPhone yeah. and he, he sold that. He yeah. just put it, drop it to this account uh, and then the specimen directly with, goes with all information to the collection of this guy. So okay. congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Quest of so many collectors. Do you want to be on film? I don't care if you are. He is now? Okay, cool. Um, everyone, this is Chris Vaughn. He's our, he's our good buddy. Works here at Five Minerals International. We've had him here for two years. We love him. Um, I'm, I'm going to kick your ass. Um, David, you're such a jerk. No, oh, I'm sorry. He's got that recorded. No, he doesn't. No, he can, oh, no, he no. can edit. I was joking. I was joking. It'd be, it'd I loved be it. Brian, it would be Brian to leave it in there as a joke. Okay, he will. He will. He'll leave it in. Yeah. No one heard the preamble to that. Right. Don't make me shoot you. Yeah. Did you yeah, see that? Yeah, Isn't that helpful? Yeah, I'd love that. Yeah. Isn't that great? Definitely we were playing pistol. around with how to Didn't mount that. For the lunatics might in, in your memory is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm so so sorry. Is that good or bad? <laughs> yeah, ridiculously bad. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> My memory's going down the toilet, to be honest with no, you. You're not camp. Say the name of the location. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Okay. Okay. Anna, yes. You want? It's easy. Ambato Finandrahana. Yes, it's okay. come from Ambato Finandrahana in Madagascar. I did it. One more time. <laughs> oh, no, come on. <laughs> Ambato Finandrahana. You, Dave. Dave. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah. Rutile and hematite, pseudomorph after hematite. I'm not going to do that. That's the best I can do. <laughs> and we're rolling again, guys. Okay. Can we start? Yeah, now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that's going on the back of the reel. I don't care. What, you have done so much of that crap to me. I don't. It's, it's going to be costly to you, Herb. You have to pay a price. I know. I know. This mineral is going to blow you away. That's why I kept it covered. Just this hand me the, the box and I'll leave. Watch out, Dave. This might Dave. be one of his teasers. Exactly. This is an amazing thing. <laughs> oh, 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 it's one of the fronts of the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I will take the ball with you. I'll pay you back. <laughs> now, those are the rare dark chocolate ones from Switzerland. That's the locality. And the morphology, it's, it's botulinum. You gotta show us the taste test then. Yeah, you gotta do the taste test, Dave. Right now? Right, right now. now. <laughs> and we need to see the center because we need to see if it's a pseudomorphic chocolate or if it's really... <laughs> If I'm going to eat a lot of them, I can't take my time. I got to just get to work. That really, that really did go in the black hole. It went away. <laughs> Troy, thanks a lot. Thank really you, appreciate you too. Per participating and getting good minerals with us. Let's try that one more time. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it in English, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. That's a crystal form. What, what is this? What crystal form is it? Yeah, it's a crystal form, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that sounds like a rat in the room. <laughs> oh, Very classic. Yes. Let me put it this way. Yes, exactly. Paramorphite. 
Minotite. Uh, Minotite from Elora. Minotite. Cut that and do that over. Let's do it again. Azurite. Do it again. Azurite. Yeah. It's an Azurite. <laughs> it's an Azurite. Boy, okay. that would be you something. Do that. Now listen, yeah. you better yeah. not say yeah. anything about it. Come on, listen, come on. He's like, hey. <laughs> I had to do it. Hey, after you got to have a ton of the stand job. I just thought of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that picture. Yeah, that's what I, I could tell by his oh, face. Oh, shit. It made, uh, sorry, it's making me cry. I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> all right, all right. And okay, now we get there we go. So what do we have here? I noticed this. You've got... How can you thing. not notice yeah, that, look Dave? at the now, now, behave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> We call this roller crow site, and I won't say it anymore. 